Sorry, I didn't realize it was lunch. Kept talking. It's four minutes after seven. All right. Welcome back, everyone. We had our month off. I hope you all enjoyed it. I did see all of you, I think every one of you, at the school board breakfast, which went really, really well. And thank you all deeply from my perspective, especially. But I we know loved it. Feel, we loved feels it. that from the staff. It was very well received, I think, this year. And it was an excellent combination of foods. Sorry, you missed it, Bum. I know you were out of town. We had your desserts, right? Your we did. We had his goods. banana bread. And so that worked out really well, too. And he I think what's had best about the breakfast is the nurture. Yeah. yeah. It's like a mommy feeling. Nice. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> it really was. Mm -hmm. it was. It went really well this year. So I want to thank the board for that. And I am glad that it went well for the staff as well. So anyway, we're back to business. I hope school started well. It seems like it has. Agendas are here. Stephen, you have, is this a pile for me? No. Well, that's something that we, you may decide whether people need a copy or want a copy. It's not here. on the agenda, yeah, so that's something that yeah. we... It's just information. Okay. It has to do with our zoom for... Uh, okay, so yeah. is there something that we need to have a conversation yeah. about? No. Uh, just I'm asking whether I need to put it on the agenda or just hand it out for information. No, we'll just hand it out for information. Oh, all right. I'll take a copy and I'll hand some in each direction. This is just an FYI that's sitting in front of me. So. It's our dues for membership at the SBA. Okay, members of the public. We have members of the public here. And in fact, sorry, this room, <laughs> I'm still trying to adjust to the, the new configuration. And usually you people are all out in front of us. So I apologize for looking around. Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, this is a time for you to have any say, if you'd like to say something. If there's something that's on the agenda you want to speak to, you can wait till that point on the agenda or whatever. It's up to you. I don't know what you're here for. And I also don't know who you are, so I hope. Tara, did you do a sign up? I did. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. So introduce yourselves. I know some of you, of course. But. Well, sure. I'm Tom Walters, and I did want to introduce myself. I'm a, a new buyer here at the Union Oh, so wonderful. I wanted to thank you and say hello. And Teach in the music department. Music department. Recognize the name. Um, All right. Nice to meet you. I'm Ron Kelly. I know you both. Yes. All of you. Thank you. So. I'm Sandy Judd. I have a middle school uh, student and a high school student. And I'm here to hear what um, the board has to say about the music department. Great. Okay. Thank you. That's on the agenda. Good. Welcome. Hi. I'm Kim Saul. And so we sold. We're here to support the music. Music? Okay, great. I hear no music. Jen Connor, project director for 2019. Thanks, Jen. Glad you're here. Because I remember really good. Okay. Is that on here? Is there something you want? Or is there something you okay. No, I'm just here. Thanks. Okay. Moving on. Correspondence. Um, I have a couple of emails that I received from David Diesendorf. Um, I don't think there was anyone else. Yeah, and he's already been here and got in business. Oh, okay, so he isn't coming tonight. So I'll just mention them. I wanted to get them get it in the minutes. That um, He sent a couple of emails over two separate issues. The first one was during the summer. Um, it, was, it was in August. We have it. And it was about um, some concern. He, for, let me back up for a second. David... David Diesendorf is the emergency management coordinator, I think is what his title is, for the town of Townsend. He's also on the select board in the town of Townsend. All, most of you remember him from being on the school board um, in Townsend. He's no longer on the school board. But um, there was a letter that came to us over a concern about um, some drainage issue that happened with a parent, uh, I mean, a community member. Honestly, I think, it, Frank, wasn't this a... This one, somebody told me it was all straightened out. Yeah, there was a misunderstanding. Was misunderstanding was about a dog who got ill. And okay, so that was what it was. A dog right. was ill. And that one turned out to be nothing. So that was earlier on. And then the second one is an issue over um, when Tropical Storm Irene came through, the Millbrook, which runs through our property here, um, had quite a bit of debris built up. In it. And the town of Townsend has secured a grant, which is wonderful that they've done that, and it's to remove... Um, some of this debris so that if we ever have high water again, we won't have flooding in our fields or wherever else in the town. And um, so 
David has been the coordinator between the town of Townsend and Leland and Gray. He was sent, he sent a couple of emails about that just to make sure that we were aware of this, and because it's on our property, and that um, we had to sign because it's a FEMA federal grant. Um, we had to sign a release so that they can come onto the property, and they're working through the administration. I advise him to go to the administration, which he he has done, and um, the administration has signed the document that needed to be signed. And um, he's working with Ed, I believe, Ed McGrath, who's our yeah, he's going to be contacting Ed this next week, yeah. And, um, and working to remove the debris out of the... Yeah, and we're concerned about the access. Right. We want to make sure that the equipment that accesses the <coughs> stream doesn't mess up our fields. Stays off the leach field, you know. And so that, there's a plot, which I reviewed with David before this meeting, uh, and uh, explained which parts of the bank were going to be done, and uh, I think it's all fine, so... Uh, you just need to be clear with Ed McGrath about uh, when that's going to start. The work has to be completed by the end of October, so this isn't, you know, this is going to happen pretty quickly. And there's a potential of working on two separate parts of the bank that adjoin our property. Also, the adjoining property owners have to agree, which I'm sure they will. Uh, so that's uh, that's it. He was eager to come and speak to the board if you needed, but uh, Emily and I consulted and felt that we should just take care of this and move on. I don't know if anybody has any questions or concerns about it. It's not a pretty straightforward. Not, I, I'm thrilled that this is going to happen. And <clears throat> it was, we thank the town of Townsend and David for doing that, going through this process. So anyway, that was correspondence. I had one other. I have a letter that came to us from a former staff member, and it's a personnel issue, so I brought it just to give to you. Right. It's not something that we would read at a meeting, and so I'm handing it to the superintendent. I also have... Um, Frank, this is something that I think I got from you. It was in my correspondence pile. And actually, it doesn't belong to me. <laughs> and it, it's, the, it's the new Fane School District. So I'll just pass this down. It's from Sullivan Powers, and it just somehow got to me. And it's to, I, I know there's probably one for us, too, somewhere. But that one happens to be the new Fane School District one. So if you just pass that one on to new Fane. And that was it that I had. Does anybody else have any correspondence? I did not check the box. Upstairs. There was nothing in there. Oh, OK. Thank you for checking. All right. So, if that's it and nobody has any questions, we'll move on to administrative reports. Okay, so principal. And you sent quite a yeah. bit. Well, it's been two months, and it's the start of the school year, and result was, luckily, the I had to submit this to you before we met um, with our improvement plan coordinator from the Department of Education, so I couldn't add any more to that because I just had it on Friday. Uh, and I mean, it's there's nothing I feel I need to review in uh, detail, um, except for the attachments uh, that I sent. And so I, 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 I think I sent them to you because I'm so proud of the work that we have done. Uh, so, for example, uh, one of the attachments was it looks like this. And it's about um, where the where and when the writing genres, there's six of them, are taught and where taught and assessed or just assessed. And this piece of work is the result of a database that we created of all of our course syllabi. So about 88 different courses we offer. The teachers entered that information, only probably took 15 minutes of course, um, in June. And from this information, uh, Linda Rood, our literacy coach, and I were able to analyze redundancies and gaps and, 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 and address them. So at uh, one of our in-service days, we were able to distribute this and uh, departments met together to review this and be able to see what am, what am I responsible for doing. And for some, it was a great relief, and for others, it was more than they had realized. Uh, but Linda and I are continuing to support the individual teachers and the departments uh, to be able to do this uh, the, the best it can be done. And it, it's a process, because in some areas they hadn't necessarily um, taught or gave an assessment, or, or say a, 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 a writing assessment in, I would just pick anything, um, in ninth grade, um, high, high, where it says high school PE. And I should mention that in that column where it says ninth grade assess only, anyone who has it up, it lists a bunch of high school courses together because we don't know if you take them in ninth grade or tenth grade, like art or music, and sometimes you take it multiple years. So, uh, 
that was one of the uh, documents that I showed our um, improvement plan coordinator from the Department of Ed to demonstrate that, yes, we have our, uh, a uh, need to address reading and writing in our school, and this is one way. Any questions about this? No, but really, congratulations for tackling it. This is really good work. Yes, I'm sure the consultant was completely blown away. <laughs> 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 I told him afterwards privately, I said, you understand, this is a really very, uh, <laughs> you know, driven uh, principle we've got here, yeah. you know. This is a, but this was a really great need, and so this is the starting point that should, should reveal so many good results down the road. And, and I think there already is. Yeah. We, with our ninth graders coming, coming into the high school, um, this is their second year of, <coughs> basically their third year entry that we have um, uh, done the literacy across the curriculum. And they actually started the spring of the first year I, I, I got here. So they have become very accustomed to the tools. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step with this is having benchmark assessments. So there would be uh, one or two essays per year that would then be saved and a student would have a portfolio to, that we would be looking at so we could determine not just for the individual student, but school-wide, where do we need to perhaps mm -hmm. teach more procedure writing or teach more response to text, mm -hmm. which is all about citations so, uh, and analysis. The other document, any other thoughts on that, writing genres? Uh, the, other, the next document is very similar in format about our strategic instruction um, model from the University of Kansas, where we did about um, 15 months of training in. Uh, there are more um, tools besides the ones lefted, um, listed in the left columns, about nine of them that we have learned. Uh, but there are others that exist, but we're not going to learn any more of these tools until we have this integrated school-wide. So similarly, it shows the, the tool, like the paragraph writing strategy is listed first, and then who's teaching and assessing and who's just assessing. Any questions about this? And the last document, which I'm pretty sure I sent you, was about professional development. Did yeah, you guys get that one? Yes. Okay. So uh, I would say that is also very important progress for us to, to understand where uh, the respective departments are, what work is in front of them, what they've, of course what they've accomplished already. Because uh, they're now in different places. What the science department needs or the music department needs is different from what the English department needs. And now that we have a baseline of the writing genres and the sim strategies, we can, we can then see what is it that we need to work on. Plus there are some other initiatives um, in this as well as including um, assessing the expectations of student learning, which is like on page three of the student handbook. And, having a real system for doing so, which could result in uh, assessing them, reporting them, and then making database decisions. Until now, we really haven't been able to make database decision, decisions on curriculum instruction assessment. So that's, uh, I couldn't help but send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just, wonderful. It, I mean, it was a summer's worth of, of, of work, and it could never have happened without the literacy coach. So thanks for continuing to support that uh, position. And I think that's about it. Well, there was one more that you sent. Uh, we'll we'll talk about the music okay. data a little bit later. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. We, yeah. I don't, okay. it, it's sort of been, we've been talking about it a few, uh, for a few meetings, yeah. and I said, we got to look at data together. Okay. So okay. that's, that's um, what we'll do. This being the beginning of the school year, do you have um, the enrollment number of students? We have 365 students. And uh, middle school, high school, do you have a victim? Um, we have 54 students in grade 7, about 65 students in grade 8. Okay. And, and the rest is high school. And I'm amazed you have these numbers. <laughs> do you have uh, uh, out of district students? Um, about a quarter of them. And of our, oh, from 
telling Whitney, you um, by here by school choice, or yes. <coughs> so like being from a choice town like Dover, or exactly. so about 25 percent, roughly 25 percent, and uh, I think I don't remember if I shared this with the board, but the faculty uh, and the administration on one of the last days of school did an analysis of our population. Um, uh, I'll say. Uh, comparison, Leland and Gray 10 years ago to Leland and Gray today, so they could see our changing demographics, because we do have a significantly higher um, percentage of students eligible for free and reduced meals. That has a lot to do with, of course, the national economy. Uh, I mean, we went up six percentage points in one year. Uh, at the same time, uh, where are students coming from? So like 10 years ago, we had zero students from Athens and Grafton. This year, we have So it's, it's, it's a uh, boy. Yeah, I think it might even be. Uh, yeah, that's. A, um, we have, we had 140 students from New Thing 10 years ago. Now we have 104. We have, and and we and so not only did we look at the actual numbers, but we looked at the percentages. So the obviously the percentage of enrollment is changing. That it's gone down significantly from Dover and New Thing, and. For um, Athens and Grafton, of course, it's a huge difference because there's nothing before, um, and an increase in percentage from Jamaica. So the actual number of you know the, the number of students and how it's changed our population in Jamaica has uh, about a 60 percent free and reduced meals rate at the school uh, compared to Dover, which is about half of that. So that's also has an impact on them, certainly on us. It, uh, you'll notice that in the music <coughs> enrollment data, I had included eligibility for free reduced meals and learning plans because it's part of the changing demographics. So who do we represent? So you know who's represented in what's in which programs? So I um, pay very close attention to. I know I'm talking a long time, but enrollment in advanced placement courses, level one courses, uh, uh, physics and chemistry. Um, and earth science uh, to see if it's representative of our school population. So, Duran, the when you when you speak about most of the ones you, you mentioned, Jamaica and Newfane, the others are, are um, tuition towns. But mm -hmm. I'm interested in the Jamaica and Newfane thing. The, so, the the re decline in numbers in Newfane um, it, it, does that reflect the decline in the elementary schools, or are we losing children to other schools? Um, for homeschooling across, I, I don't mean just New mm -hmm. you mentioned New it's a decline um, in percentage. So is that is that just a reflection of less students in New and more in Jamaica, or do you know that? If, if you don't know the answer, that's I fine. I will tell I would, you that it was, it, it, really. was, it, was, it was easy to look at the demographics compared to 10 years ago. It is much harder to look at why students are leaving or if they had never arrived um, from years ago. So another right. thing that we looked at as a faculty is the list of, of students um, who came to Leland and Gray and then chose to go somewhere else and what towns they were from and where they decided to go to. And so we, but this, this past school year was then the baseline data. So I can't really go back and say more students yeah. not coming for it or leaving from um, uh, from New Thane or Dover compared because it's just the beginning. But we are able to see in a sense where our competition is. Okay. I'll just point out the board, one of the administrative uh, responsibilities is the 40-day uh, report, so-called the uh, October 10th report of the uh, enrollment of attendance, average daily membership. Actually, average daily membership comes up at the end of the year after they figure out how many, how many times the child was absent and so forth. But uh, one thing critical about this choice issue is that since uh, the legislature has opened the gates to greater uh, degree of choice at the uh, high school level, uh, we can expect, uh, we can hope that there'll be more students choosing to attend Leland and Gray. Uh, we're no longer barred from admitting them due to a regional agreement with the other high schools. On the other hand, uh, we have to be very careful that, uh, that we're aware where they live uh, should still claim the ADM, the state uh, student base grant, even though we're teaching the school to teach this to the student. 
the town in which they live uh, receives the state-based uh, grant for educating at the high school level. Uh, in other words, the money doesn't follow the child, and it hasn't in the past, so you know, this is not new. But I do think that I will become much more aware of students that are, as you asked, leaving our, uh, uh, well, the, the, oh, the, the Union, Union School District uh, to uh, go elsewhere because we will be claiming them on our roles, I mean, on our, right. on our reporting role right. for uh, state, uh, right. state funding, even though they're attending someplace else. And that's going to have to be a pretty honest and collegial relationship among the superintendents to make sure that that's the case, at least in the public sector. We don't really have any control over uh, or, or any way of monitoring, uh, except by rumor, who goes to uh, a, a private school, you know, who withdraws to go to a private school. Or homeschool, either? Or do uh, we have now, homeschool, we do have reports. I do, I do receive the reports of all the people who are legitimately enrolled in home study. Okay. Uh, a, a further complication or a, adventure there this year for Leland and Gray will be that we're now aware that we can uh, report uh, home study students, the extent to which they use services at the school, for example, if they take one course out of four, that probably is worth a .25 FTE. Um, and uh, if it's going for the year, if it's a semester, it'd be half of that. But anyway, we're supposed to claim all those little shares of people, FTEs now, and be able to be reimbursed for <coughs> them. This is not really a change. This supposedly was in effect, I think, during the correct me wrong, back to 2000 or something. 1998. 1998. And, uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, at least while I was here in the middle school, it never was uh, an issue that we reported or felt that there was sufficient uh, reason to report on it in terms of the money. And I was never informed as a principal nor as a superintendent until Duren uh, discovered this uh, via other means. So uh, anyway, that's, that's the latest on that. Also, we get credit for your 21st century grant activities. It's all home study students participate in the sports and after school activities, that's also worth some, uh, some minimal uh, uh, credit on our average daily membership. Questions? I, I did want to mention that when I was thinking about the 15 students from Athens and Grafton, I was like, that's funny, because with the change in the school choice guide, we have this year 15 students who are not from choice towns, but are coming here for school choice. If they were here from school choice towns, we'd get whatever it is, twelve or thirteen thousand dollars per student. Eight thousand eight hundred fifty. Is it that one? Is yeah. it that much? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm way off. That then. Right there. Okay. What's our What's our reimbursement on the, the? I mean, our state funding for high school students. Isn't it eighty eight? There is no grant. There is no. There There is no, you know, grant per student. There is a. There's a tax rate calculation yeah. that's based off about five uh, derivative numbers, and one of them is the number you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Thank you for the question. None, none of that follows. Yeah, that's, it's not Doesn't, money so that we, actually so comes to us. For the we, before um, the new guide from the commissioner, we were limited to 10 students. We yes. made an exception this past year for 11. Mm -hmm. And so I got permission from my neighbor superintendent to do that. And this year, that now in this current school year, we have 15, and, and uh, but of course none, uh, no funding follows. That's a whole class size, you know, yeah. like a whole biology class or English class, and so it has an, you know, an impact on our resources. But of course, we're happy to have them. And for the te from the teacher's point of view, it's indistinguishable what town is do where it's from. Oh, I did want to mention that, that this information is probably good to keep in mind as, as, you're, as you're considering the proposal from the administration regarding funding of the budget, budgeting, because after all, we're trying to have an inquiry cycle here where we make changes, see how that affects student enrollment <coughs> and performance, and then uh, decide on how to reinvest or how to change our investments within the budget. And we know that's coming very yeah. soon. Okay, so is there anything else? Bruce? Could you define um, equitable access to excellence? I just didn't quite understand what that so meant. That um, specifically <coughs> refers to uh, all students being able to take high 
high level courses, grade level or honors track courses, uh, so that if uh, so the so the differentiated instruction workshop was how do you teach students at high academic levels, you know, based on say the Vermont standards or the Common Core standards, when students uh, don't necessarily come with the skills uh, to um, perform at that level. So that's what that's about. In a mixed classroom, a classroom mixed levels. Right. That's right. So, yeah, in a, in a heterogeneous classroom. So how do you get them all to learn at high levels? And mm -hmm. so the process is through differentiating instruction, not to make it easier for some students, um, but to teach using a diversity of instructional methods. So you might be, the teacher might be teaching the content, the same content, in three different ways. That's what that's pretty much doing. Great question. Okay, any other questions? That was specifically in Durant's report. No? We'll move on to you. Stephen, and your, you, Stephen did send a, his opening day remarks. Thank you for Yeah, I, uh, actually, I am uh, giving all the boards of bad news this month. Uh, I'm not really going to send a superintendent's report or at least try to refocus my efforts so that uh, I'm not uh, duplicating things or, um, well, anyway, you have to tell me what you'll miss you know, after a couple of months, so give me that feedback. But I, I know that I spend a lot of time trying to tailor an individual report for each board, and I will continue to do so focusing on policy. Uh, that really is the primary month-to-month uh, uh, -month, uh uh, issue that I should raise before the board, and that isn't something that typically the principal would do. When we're talking about student learning, we should be focused on our action plan and the indicators that Duren provides. Uh, I don't need to muddy the waters there. Uh, but I did want to point out in my opening remarks that I, I made a, some, some summary data that was based upon the principle of growth. If you didn't uh, read it, uh, just to uh, reiterate uh, for the public, uh, the Vermont State applied for a waiver from No Child Left Behind based on the principle that we would, the concept that we would uh, have an indicator of growth for a student in the third grade and then see how they improve in the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, taking them on up, watching the same student, not bunching a whole bunch of third graders together and comparing them with next year's third graders, which is what the NECAP data does now. So uh, we analyze the data in-house, uh, Frank, uh, Matt Martin um, and some principals collaborated, uh, contributed to uh, getting a huge data dump on the kneecap scores in math. And we were able to show uh, how many kids improved, stayed the same, which means growth, because if you stay the same, you're proficient in third grade, and proficient in the sixth grade, obviously you got better. I mean, that's progress. Uh, but also showed which students, which individuals, to what numbers of individual students actually decreased in performance over that time. That's the canaries in the mine shaft and the alarm bells that we need to be uh, focusing our attention on. So, at any rate, that, that's why that information was pertinent on the opening date. And it is a summary of the whole SU. We had two uh, four-year comparisons, third through uh, sixth and fifth through eighth grades. And then in Fondas and Pinnell, uh, that's primarily an effort in the, well, is an effort of the middle of the elementary schools. We compared two years of data because the teachers have been using it for two years for one year, and uh, that was very encouraging. So, uh, you know, part of my responsibility is to rally the troops and make sure we're heading in the right direction, and if we are getting some results, then we need to stick with it. And if we're not getting the results uh, in math, I particularly wanted to call attention because we are now offering a math uh, instruction course, how to teach math, not about math, but how to teach math, by Dr. Mahesh Sharma, who worked with Wardsboro last year very effectively, and now is working with all of the elementary schools as well as uh, uh, legal and grade uh, middle school and high school. I'm actually taking that course. It's an exciting course, uh, six days, and uh, I wish I had it 30 years ago, but you know, I'm kind of a math guy, so I'm, I'm having fun with that. Um, so uh, get back to my report. Otherwise, I would report on a monthly basis uh, uh, changes in staffing uh, and uh, we are actually, we did advertise for an accountant, Dana, Dana Ladd did uh, uh, tender a resignation in uh, Frank's department, and uh, so we are interviewing candidates uh, later this week, and uh, keep 
kept informed as we make a decision. Um, and then the other the other thing that I will report when it's uh, appropriate is having to do with finance. But generally in this meeting, uh, Frank carries the ball with the uh, financial report. Uh, so uh, that's it. Questions, I think. Uh, let's see. I, I passed out some things. I have my code of ethics in case you want to hold me. You know, you have a code of ethics, and so does the superintendent. So I call that to your attention. Um, and uh, let's see. Was there something else? I passed out a lovely book, right? This mm -hmm. little viral deal. If, you, if you're on the board last year, you got one as well. This is an annual publication by your Vermont School Boards Association. And uh, you are paying dues. Uh, so uh, you're not getting this as a result of your dues, unfortunately. There's an additional fee for this, but uh, we did purchase one for uh, all board members. And it is a resource uh, book for you when you are struggling with some decision or wondering what, was, what your role is and what your responsibilities may be, how to proceed on asking questions or exploring something. I think this book will be a great resource for you. So. They got this one last year? Because I didn't think I thought this Well, somebody said they got a copy. Didn't I, 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 with it. Class, you got a copy. I, I yeah, oh. if, you, if you took the workshop, you get one as part of the workshop. I did get one through the workshop. I got one from participating in the board. Right. Yeah. But I think this is a new one from, um, we used to have one that was called the resource directory, and it was found in a different way. I think this is brand new, and it's really quite informative. I think you'll like the layout. I think you'll, you'll like it. Use it as a resource. Ask questions honestly if you have issues around it um, or questions about it. It should be really helpful to you in your role. As school board yeah, it's been well received by the boards. <coughs> and uh, be, be free to share your feedback on it regarding the contents and Absolutely. give helpful comments back to your executive director, Stephen Dale. Uh, the only other thing I think I'll mention, uh, Emily, is that uh, if you attended the retreat and you want to be uh, uh, reimbursed, uh, you, you certainly, if you paid, you should uh, try to send that little that little note, for that receipt that you got from uh, Allison. Uh, from the, if you don't have it, we'll make it up again. But I want to make sure that board members are covered on that uh, retreat meal. And thank you for attending. I was like, I didn't get that. That's right. But I did. Yeah. Okay. I certainly welcome your questions in the future on the code of ethics or any other matter. Um, and uh, let, let me know what you're missing from the reporting so, so system. So the, the fact that we won't be having a written report is what you're telling us. Well, that's um, a, I, it'll probably focus on policy or on an issue. Uh, okay. I know that one other board has already given me the feedback that they miss uh, having. They don't have an agenda with the future meetings on it at oh, their okay. board. And they're missing getting that from me, so I, I may have to be uh, doing something like that on a, you know, board meeting basis. But that's really not, uh, that can be accomplished, I think, uh, more, more easily. Just to keep in mind, one of the efforts here is for me to reduce the amount of uh, hours that I'm putting in things that are not essential uh, and try to focus more on the actual supervision evaluation of the work in the schools and the principals. So, uh, that's it, it is a it is an eight to, you know eight to ten hour weekly adventure for me to produce the papers that I've been producing before, and, and I'm in you know total agreement with you on that. I know you've spent a huge amount of time um, doing that. I know that board members appreciate that across the, across the issue, and I re totally respect your decision about it. I just wanted to mention that I think that one of the things that is critical, and I don't mean this just for you and Greg, because I actually think we're fairly well connected to the SU level here at Leland Gray, maybe even more so than other schools. But I hope that with the absence of your written yeah, report, that there will be that, um, that focused attention to what we're doing at the SU That's level. Because picture. it is very easy for us to operate in isolation of each other, and it's critical that we don't do that. And, and for us at Leland and Gray, we all know how important that is because all those elementary schools are feeding, or many of those, most of those elementary schools are feeding their students right into here at Leland Gray. So for us, K-12 education is critical. It may not seem quite so critical if you're sitting at a, a K-6 school or, or as Marvel is called, K-8. So that, that would be the only thing I would suggest that we make sure that that connection is still happening between schools and between schools yeah. and the SU. Well, I'll be listening. We'll see what, you know, what evolves. But, uh, you know,
share your comments uh, through your board chair or directly with me if you, uh, if you wish. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Stephen? School's no? off to a good start. I was in every single classroom, except when I went gray. I did get here, but I didn't get every classroom. But uh, it was fun to, see all the fun to see all the kids on the first day. And the grounds were very well kept in most of our schools. Yeah. And compared schools to other places I've visited uh, here this fall, it's very impressive how, how people are caring for their buildings. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Frank, I see you're handing out report. Yeah. Uh, so I have a financial report. It's a little different format. I'll spend a, just a little time talking about um, the uh, transition to the financial system, new financial system. Um, while that document is going around, um, I want to follow up a little bit on uh, Doreen's report regarding enrollment. Um, so if you looked at your annual report or you looked at your budget document, you would see this. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, mean to interrupt. Yeah. I hate to interrupt you, but Stephen's telling me that we need to adjust our um, Yeah, let's our adjust agenda the agenda for the willing board. Uh, uh, if you could uh, you. allow Megan uh, no Altshuler Megan to make her presentation. Sure. Uh, and uh, she's uh, certainly been uh, instrumental in this 21st century in the SEEK program. And uh, uh, we have her scheduled. She has some other commitments at home. So uh, as, a, Sorry about that. As, a, I wasn't aware. as a parent, we don't want to interfere with that parenting skills going on there. Uh, um, so. so I wasn't really aware of where I had to be for the camera. So I'm going to try to kind of maneuver this. I, I told her about the camera. I, you know, I'm trying to take care of you there. Much more stable in there. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, while this is warming up, I just want to let you guys know. I'm, I'm Megan Altshuler, um, and as you know, our district received the 21st Century Grant uh, last year. And here at Leland & Gray, that's allowed us to really expand on um, the after-school programming that is offered. Um, and it's not just after school. It's in the morning, it's after school, it's on the weekends, and now um, it's in the summer as well. And that's really what I'm here to talk to you about, um, is try, and I will try my best to um, sort of get across some of the magic that happened here this summer, because it really was um, an amazing summer. And I have this great picture here, but you don't see it. <laughs> Is that on, actually? No. I think it probably is sleeping. And if there's someone who knows what, what to do to wake it up. Are you Get up! <laughs> Tell us what SEEK stands for. Um, Summer Educational Enrichment Camp. Um, and it, um, students and uh, counselors who were our amazing counselors here this summer. We hired eight high school students uh, to work this summer and really they became sort of the cornerstone of what went on here. Um, along with um, some of the teachers uh, came up with the name of the camp. So um, that was um, how it developed. Um, so, um, the grant allowed us to offer this summer program to 7th and 8th graders in our district for free, uh, which was, as you know, um, is a pretty great opportunity for our community. And uh, a lot of students took advantage of it. Uh, and here are some of them now. <laughs> um, so you should all have received a handout um, from Duran with uh, some of, some of this information on there, um, and if you could just um, refer to that throughout this, that would be helpful. Does everybody either have it electronically or? Okay. I can let you see. Okay. <laughs> um, so the the oh great. So the campus designed for seventh and eighth grade coming into Leland and Gray, and as you know. Our SU covers a, a wide geographical area. So these students are coming from as far as Marlboro and Wyndham and Jamaica and uh, Dover and all, you know all of our schools. And some of them are coming from places where you know like Wyndham, where they literally graduated with three. Um, or you know in Newfane, they had a big class, and I'm not sure what the exact number was, but I'm pretty sure 
it was fewer than 20 um, in all of our schools. And so then they're coming into Leland and Gray to a class of 60, to a school of close to 400. And that's a really big change for them. Um, it's a big change academically to have so many different teachers. Um, it's a big change from socially to have all of these new peers. And the idea of SEEK was to bridge that gap um, and uh, help them to find a home here at Leland and Gray. Uh, so that uh, with those feelings of safety will come the abil greater ability to access their education. Um, so there are sort of four main goals of the SEEK program as written into the grant um, and that um, we developed in developing this program uh, under the what. <laughs> and so um, Bruce Whitman's here. Uh, he was a, one of the teachers here at SEEK and instrumental in creating the culture of uh, the SEEK program. So. Um you know, I look at these pictures and I feel like really nostalgic. I really do. I like want to go back. See a t-shirt on. What? What's that? Yeah, I know. I know. That wasn't planned, by the way. Um, but uh, it's sort of like this. When I look at these pictures and I see Megan, I don't see Megan too much anymore, or I see Ben, who I hope there's a picture up there of Ben. It's like we have this little secret. I don't know if you feel that way. Mm -hmm. It's just a little secret. Like we found the secret of the universe for those three weeks. And I want to bottle it and I want to keep it and I want to bring it to Leland and Greg and make Leland and Gray like these three weeks work. Okay, enough of that. What, we did some, some, you know, education. Obviously, in a week's worth of time with the students, we couldn't do a bunch of stuff that will improve their kneecap scores, okay? We couldn't do a lot of stuff, you know, that will get them super prepared for coming into Leland and Gray or super prepared for going into eighth grade. But we could make it, in, in, you know, enriching in the sense that it was exploration for them. And I think we did a great job. Uh, the robotics class was a huge success, okay? Um, the writing class is certainly stretched out. Some incredible writing stuff, like going over to the cemetery, finding a, a you know a headstone, and then writing a story about that person. That's so creative. That's so good to me. You know, being a science geek, but um, <laughs> um, you know, in the sciences, we could actually go out and do things like look for life in Millbrook to to make things blow up. Don't worry, nobody got hurt. We'll be all set. Okay, and do this. So we had that in the morning. This academic time. Well, I hope that transfers into improved stuff at Leland Gray. Of course I do. Um, but if we can just make it exciting and say, wow, it's okay to like science and like writing. That's pretty cool. And they did, all of them. Even the students who came in on the first day didn't want to write a single word on a piece of paper on their first day in that writing class. At the end, Ben and the counselors in that class had to actually stop them to go to lunch. And they're like, okay, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Um, that's pretty incredible. Building relationships um, was a really big part of what happened here this summer. You know, if, if you want to know if SEEK was a success, you know, don't, again, I'm going to re reference the kneecap scores. Don't look at that. Do we, if our main job was to make the incoming seventh graders feel safe, or Sam Crowther, stop <laughs> crossing his eyes, feel safe at Leland Gray and no adults here and no people here, then we hit a home run. There's no doubt about that to me. Do you feel that way? Yes, absolutely. Can I tell you just a quick story about this young lady? This young lady didn't know me at all. I didn't, I'm not sure I even had her in, in a class at SEEK, okay? But I'm coaching middle school soccer, and the first day, she's a seventh grader from Jamaica. And, and she came in, and she was distraught. We're talking crisis time. She lost her paperwork for soccer, her athletic contract and her uh, uh, physical. She didn't know me from Adam before here, but she came up to me and, and, and said, look, I lost this stuff. So she felt comfortable as a seventh grader who didn't know anybody at Leland and Gray to come up and talk to me about it, and we were able to work it out. If that was our task, then we did a great job. And she's playing soccer, too, so that's good. Um, so our day was really split. In the morning, um, students signed up to, be, to take one of these academic classes, the writing, the robotics. The, um, the science class, and in the afternoon they signed up for a full week of uh, one of these enrichment classes like woodworking, cooking, um, a team, team sports, ceramics, that kind of thing. This was really important to get to know the students on a different level. Instead of me teaching science, I got to go out and play, you know, we played soccer, we played mat ball, we did lots of different things. We went swimming in Millbrook, which I'm not sure was allowed, but we did it anyway. Um, but the ceramics here, or the woodworking, you know, really gave the kids pride and got to know 
the adults here in a different way. You know, I'm not just a science geek who talks about meteorology and, and chemistry and physics, but I like, to, I like to play soccer. I like to do this kind of thing. And that relationship building was, was I think, almost as crucial as the academics. I don't know how you feel about that, but... Oh. Um, and then the recreational activities that were here. Um, these girls didn't know each other before SEEK. At least some of them didn't know each other. There's one from Athens over there on the right. I don't know where the other two are from, but... Yeah, building relationships was a big deal. And we'll talk a little bit about full value, I guess, in a, in a future slide. Um, but it was, it was really about community. And I want you guys to remember the word community when I get to the full value wrap about this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important, I think, that these activities that we did were both challenging. They were meant to challenge them, to push them a little bit. But because it was safe here, and because those relationships existed, we could push them just to where they were feeling comfortable sort of stepping over that line of comfort to do something to make themselves look silly, to put themselves out there, to try something that's hard, to try something they didn't think that they were good at. And um, they felt safe with the people here and in the space to do that. Um, and that came out in their writing and in building robots and in um, building a picture frame out of wood and in playing tag and in science, of course. <laughs> Yeah, full value. Um, this is really hard for me to describe. Um, and I was thinking about it coming in today. Full value was something that I, I taught at the Upper Bound program at Keene State College for a long time. And just to give you guys, and I know we've got a short time, a little bit of history about the Keene State Upper Bound program. That actually, all these values started at Leland and Gray back in the 1970s. Alan Glotzer was a teacher here. Alan became um, the assistant director of Upper Bound and eventually led trio programs at Keene State. This idea really developed at Leland and Gray back in the 70s. Full value, I call it, it's okay to be me. That it doesn't matter who I am, I'm going to be respected within the community. That if, you know, I like to wear tie-dye and shorts and this, that's fine. Okay? Or if somebody likes to, um, I don't know, be different in some way, it's okay. We're going to respect that. So this really became our mantra. Full value. It's okay to be nice and it's okay to be me. And that, to me, is crucial to this program, to maintain that. And just to give you a short story, the last day of SEEK during m and which was movement and more, well, it kind of like, how would you describe that? A recess? No, it wasn't yeah, really a recess, it was like, but it was a structured recess. It was like everything from, uh, you know, sort of science exploration to yoga and everything in between. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we had a mat ball game. Now, I'm not going to describe what mat ball is, but it's a competitive game based on kick. And when you have this situation, you always have these kids who just want to win at all costs. You know, you get these competitive kids that are going to do this. And then you have the kids who don't want to participate at all. And the coalescing moment for me, and I don't know about you, but we've talked about this, was at that point, we all came together. Yeah. That the kids who were really competitive were cheering on the kids who didn't want to do it, and the kids who didn't want to do it participated. And, 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 and not just the kids who didn't want to do it, but the kids who didn't want to do it on the other team. There was not a kid that came up to, to bat that didn't have 15 people cheering for them. And I mean, literally not one kid. And, you know, those kids are here at Leland Gray and they see me in the hall and they see each other in the hall and they stop what they're doing with their friends. And these kids are 12 and 13 years old. There's nothing that stops them from doing what they're doing with their friends. And they say hi or they ask a question and they bring me their schedule and say, Oh my God, what does this mean? Where am I supposed to be right now? Because they, they feel safe. That was the point that we became a community. And I wanted to play, kick, I wanted to play mat ball for like four hours. I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to grab teach science. I didn't want to go swimming in Millbrook. I just wanted to play <laughs> mat ball for four hours. Because it was like the cool. no, seriously, it was like the coolest thing for me. Okay? Um, so full value is, is something that, as C continues, that I really think has to become our central value. I just got to say, are we almost done? Yeah. I got to say a couple more things. The brilliance of Jen, uh, Jenny and Megan and Heiner, our counselors, was amazing. They made the program. They really made it. It wasn't me. It wasn't, you know, Ruth Ann. It wasn't Kristen. It wasn't the teachers. It was, wasn't Jenny or Megan. It was the counselors. That was brilliant. So I applaud you for that. Okay. Secondly, we need your help. Okay. 
if you, you know, and I, and I came in a little late and you were talking about recruitment and retainment at people at Leland and Gray. We need to be able to get into each and every one of your schools to talk about this program. Okay? And last year we got into three. We got into towns in Jamaica and Wordsboro. This year what we got to do to recruit this program is not bring old guys like me. Okay? <laughs> what we got to do is bring the seventh graders incoming from their school and say, please come to seek. Okay? And we need the support of the administration here and the school board members here to talk to the principals and allow students, because we weren't allowed into Newburgh, okay? And I don't think we approach women, so I'm not going to slam women too hard. And Marlboro, I don't know why I didn't know Marlboro, but you know Marlboro. Um, we need that. That will help in the goal of getting kids to come here and getting kids to stay here. I guarantee it. Right? Yeah. Can you believe that? These kids all came in with friends, every one of them. Even the kids who came from schools with only three kids. And it wasn't just the kids who were playing soccer. It wasn't just the kids who already knew each other from something else. Every single one of those kids came in with friends and therefore felt safer sitting in that class on that first day so that they could learn math and science and English because they felt safe being there. They had breakfast and they had friends. And that's really what they need. Yeah. We need your help. So anyway. Oh, Whoop, um, speaking of those counselors, <laughs> um, uh, during the last week of SEEK, um, Joanne uh, recognized this, um, the amazing counselors that we had and what was happening um, with these counselors and the leadership role that they had taken and what was happening for the 7th and 8th that were here because of those relationships with the high school students. They weren't big, scary high school kids anymore. And those are kids that are, they feel like they have an older person in this building that is cool and, and says hi to them in the hall and makes um, walking through B-level a little less scary. Um, so she got a cake, and we all sat right here, down here, and, and had lunch together, and um, we went around, and each of the students, I said, just think about the counselors in the last three weeks, and what, think of something that you appreciate about them. And the first kid that was supposed to seek said, I want to go last. And <laughs> then all the kids, <laughs> and I said, uh-oh, <laughs> and said, okay, we'll come back to you. And so we went all the way around and back to him, and this is... This is what he said. Top one. <laughs> oh, and for, for you. I really didn't want to come the first week, and I was really mad on the car coming. Now I'm glad I came. Dr. Dorfman, is this going to be around in a few years? She responded. Because I want to be a counselor and an astrophysicist. And just to let you know, this was a kid who was basically forced to come. Okay. He was. As a requirement to progress on in school. And he showed up every single day. And, me, yeah. um, and this counselor here said that she learned a lot. I learned that I like working with middle school age kids, and I also feel like I grew as a person because I'm really shy, and she is. Yes, yeah, she is. And, it, and don't like public speaking or having attention on me. But at SEEK, it didn't bother me, and even now, I feel less shy in public situations. I just hired her to go work at one of the elementary schools after school. And I didn't have to go get her. She came to me and said, I want to do this. Nice. Yeah. That school is psyched <laughs> to have it should, her. It should be. Um, and I see it in this student. Um, and so we had a survey um, when the kids first got here and then as they were leaving. And you have the results here. Um, this was a um, pre post survey that was given to all of the students. And um, the percentage that you see showed improvement or greater readiness. So their answer improved. Um, they felt safer. They um, felt um, more like they were looking forward to school um, after Seek, after they had spent some time at Seek. So this, these are the numbers that show an improvement in each of those um, areas. Um, and that's it. If anyone has any questions. Questions would be great. So this is a free program, right? mm -hmm. and do you have limits on enrollment, or you can just take a gazillion? I mean, what, what's your? We would love to have that problem. That we okay. Have too many kids so you're just what do you have? Like 20 this year? No, we no, we had um, 46 total students that signed up. We had 32 seventh graders. Of the how many? 
Um, 14 eighth graders. So there was 59% of the seventh grade that came and 22% of the eighth grade. I imagine next year we'll have a greater percent of the eighth grade. So you'd like to have like 75? 100 would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We have a budget that will cover about 50. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't worry about we budget. We love 100, we can afford 50, but I'm sure if we got more, we'd find the money. All right. All right. We also were able to offer um, free breakfast and lunch to anyone 18 and under that came. So that included all of the camps that were here and um, anyone else who was 18 or under that came could have got access to free breakfast and lunch during these programs. No questions? I'd really also just like to mention what Megan just said. If you could have been at the school this summer, you would have been amazed at how many students were engaged. Mm -hmm. From SEEK, to soccer, to performing arts, to the Explorers Camp, which is over at Townsend this year, to Tom Connors, Chinese students. They, this place was just hopping. It was Very great to see all these kids engaged. <laughs> Instead of sitting at home, you know, playing video games or doing whatever. It was so cool to see that. I don't know how you feel about mm -hmm. that, but that was so cool. And one of the things that we need to maintain in this program is the bus. That was huge. The bus was huge. Without the bus, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Gas is too expensive. Hey. I think that brought a lot of attention to the program because every morning when I went to work, there were a bunch of kids sitting out <laughs> Tons. downtown so Jamaica cool. waiting to go. A lot of kids. It was so cool. Yeah. And so the bus is riding all over the place. You can just pick up along Route 30. That's uh, yeah, I, I don't know how logistics work. From to New Birth Elementary. Yeah. Just to get there at a certain point. Yeah. But it was, it was critical because yeah. we got oh, transportation yeah. to and from. Yeah, it's and amazing. And it was just so, so great. You did this uh, in July. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of the pros and cons of doing it in August? So that when it ends, school starts? Hmm. That's an interesting question. And we actually, um, we're going to be having a meeting at some point in the next month to discuss when all of the camps are happening. There have been parents who have expressed concern that many of these camps were going on at the same time, so their kids only had the opportunity to go to one and it's a long summer and they'd like to have more access. Yeah. You know, part of the problem is um, I'm not a teacher, but if I were, would I want to be teaching the week before school starts? No. Um, and there's just the accessibility of, of the spaces. So we'll be sitting <coughs> down with all of these camps and seeing if we can play a little bit of some shell games and, and move things around. But I doubt that it I doubt that it would be in Does that answer your question, Mr. Madonna? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I'm sure there's pros and cons. I'm just thinking my son is a freshman in college. He started three weeks before everybody else. Freshmen at that school start three weeks before, the re before returning students. And uh, they finished Labor Day. He came home for the weekend on Tuesday. They were there with all the upperclassmen. And uh, somehow he got to experience the place for three weeks with just freshmen. Just Your point is really well taken because one of the things that we really talked about is how do we maintain seat throughout the school year. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had this, <coughs> la I don't remember the date, it ended September 28th, uh, the July 28th, 29th, 27th, like, yeah. 20 whatever, one of those dates. How do we keep that seek feeling alive? So that's certainly something we talked about and we have a seek reunion plan for October or something. Mm -hmm. But your point's really well taken. Could we maintain it that way? So Bob and I'll talk to you before we have that meeting and just get some, get some thoughts. That's a good idea. Something that I would, would like to say is that I think that we were very lucky to entice Bruce away ah. from Upward Bound where he'd been for a very mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I thank Tom Connor for elbowing me <laughs> night after night and saying, ask Bruce, ask yeah. Bruce. Um, I didn't think Bruce would say yes. I didn't think he'd leave someplace that he was so happy. But him coming was a major coup for this program. Well, thank and, you. And Megan being the Pied Piper with students that she is um, was, you know, one of the other many key factors, but truly um, her energy and connection to kids made it happen. So thank you both. Well, That's it was counselors, it wasn't yeah. us. It was counselors. Okay. Well, people. I say something that has nothing to do with, with Seek or anything like this. So you guys have BC TV sh showing here, school board meetings. I live in Athens, so we get back TV, Falls Area Community Television out of Bells Falls. And I don't watch, watch television unless it's the Bells Falls school board meetings, because that's entertainment. 
It's all over, and we're sort of sitting around under a tree going, what do we do now? You know, and, and, and I didn't want it to end, uh, you know. I was, like, going to tell Megan, I said, look, I'll come back next week, and you don't have to pay me. Let's get the kids back here. Um, but I, was, I walked down to my truck, and it was over, and Tammy Clausen saw me, and she said, so, you guys are done. Yeah, we're done. She says, so time to start your real summer. How do you feel? And I said, I'm bummed. I'm bummed. <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I didn't want it to end. It was. It was. It was special. It really was yeah, special. Was I can't. I, it sounds like hyperbole to me, but it really was. You know? Yeah. Well, that's really great, and I. I want to thank you know Jenny and the Meister Century. And, yeah. You know, which started with certain and and um, the school for supporting it, and I, I can't say enough about you know how much this must have made a difference for our students, and I would love to see what Ruth said, 100% participation, and if, you know if like creative thoughts like what Bauman was saying and others were saying can happen. It, it's only going to support the academics and, you know, student success, not just here, but beyond here. I mean, when you read what that counselor said about how she's changed and now has less fear of public speaking, I mean, that's going to be a lifelong mm -hmm. impact. So thank you. It's very exciting to hear this. It really is. Can I say it one more? Sure. So sorry, it's fine. I just want to say one thing. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, I moved. And before I moved, um, and I have to say, I was, I was one of the kids, I, I, I was a, a popular kid. I didn't have issues with this. But I got bullied every day by this one girl who was older than me. And some of the high school kids were really scary to me. And I cannot tell you a single thing I learned my freshman year of high school, but I can tell you what that girl's name was and what she said to me every day at my locker. And I moved. I went to a different school. It didn't happen again. But then I went to sort of this alternative school that had some of this full value as part and community building as built into the day. Like we did at SEEK and we did recreational stuff and it was required and we all did it and we all had to do this enrichment stuff. And I can tell you what I learned in math that year. And I can tell you what I learned in science. You know, I can tell you about the science report I wrote about mating fruit flies. Because I didn't have to think about what Lori Cuddy was going to say to me at my locker. And I think that that happened here this summer for these kids. And I think they came in ready for algebra. You know? In the transformation of our eighth graders, we had one student who was, <laughs> sorry, I keep going on this. You guys keep me out. But he would come to the camp every day, I guess in seventh grade, yeah. with a hoodie up over his head. Oh, yeah. And a sweatshirt. And it's 90 degrees out. And I'm going, dude, it's 90 degrees. How can you have this hoodie on? And then one of the counselors noticed in week three that he was wearing a tie-dye shirt. Oh. <laughs> and today, even today, I was downstairs, I was talking to Marty and Tammy, and he walked by, and he says, hey, Whit, says, because that's what everybody calls me, that's what everybody calls me outside of Leland Gray, he says, we got to have another jousting contest. Trust me, it's okay. <laughs> um, but the, the transformation of that kid for confidence was amazing. Okay, I'll go away. That's good. Thank you so much. Yeah, wait, there's a question. Is, is it reversed? No, it's for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Could we, just to have the public here, could we jump ahead by one, and I'm assuming that's what they're here to discuss is the music? It just seems like we're keeping them, but that's what they're here for. <laughs> My guess is they really enjoy themselves. <laughs> but the over, next one. Over the last the presentation, right. I'm sure. But the next one um, is probably in the one I Well, let me ask the board if that's in the administration, because it is pushing off a couple things. Um, and and I, I should ask all of you, too, because there's a financial report that is usually pretty important, maybe maybe gold to some of you, but it's fairly important to all of us. And, well, I'm not saying we don't do that. And the other thing is the regional first. education district study. So I, I, we can bump it if the board would like to bump it up and if you guys want us to. Yeah, I totally agree. With moving it. Okay. If they want to stay after. I mean, oh, Zoe's okay. here. It's a school night. Yeah, it's a school night. Right. Right. I'm sure they don't need to do the financial report. And does anybody want to work on this? 
Yeah, somebody does need to do this. Okay, so we're, we'll, um, again, thank you. That, that was great having them come here. This is not something we can always have at any meeting, and it's great. This is important for us to have that, so. I'll, uh, Seek sounds exciting. I'll remember that. <laughs> All right, so um, we're, we're moving over. Frank will hold Frank, and we'll hold the Regional Education District Study Committee report and move on to review of music enrollment data. And that's you, Brent. You may decide it. And there was a handout, which I have here somewhere. Uh, this information uh, is to inform our conversation. Many questions have been asked that I couldn't answer, uh, and I suggested that we do some digging and find out what we can over the past three years uh, around um, music enrollment, uh, the, the demographics of who is enrolled, and if they get in, if they request. And so uh, this is a, a, a beginning place for, well, it's not really a beginning place, this is, is another piece of information for our discussion. Um, as a board and for the community to take part in. And um, I, would, I actually would leave it to the chair because it kind of came from the board members to say, we want to keep talking about this, we want more information. Uh, and there, there's, there's so many different uh, angles on this, I certainly don't want to dominate it. Okay, so you're looking for questions and comments from the board? Is that what you're uh-huh, and I think that there are some in the public who uh, would like to Clearly the speak public to. is here to this, too. But. Oh, okay. Can I ask a quick e question on the percentages? So I, think there's some errors. I think there's some errors. I think there's some errors. So, so I, I make the request for data, and yeah. I, I, have, I don't want to doubt the numbers that are there, um, but so the percentages, the I already see some problems. Um, okay. But it, the note on the bottom, so if we look at the number uh, that, <laughs> you know, the, num uh, the, enroll the enrollment percentage represents the percentage of the entire student body. So if you look at the fourth column where it says students eligible for free or reduced meals, uh, so the 10, so it basically says there are 10 students which represent 32%. Just remember it's 44% this year at Cleveland Library. So that's a... So I wouldn't say that every single percentage is wrong, mm -hmm. um, but I, I have found a, an error or two. And is that skewed between middle school and high school, or is student body considering the entire group middle school and high school? I think that maybe it works out that if in the number of requests, if you take that to the percentage of the middle school or the percentage of the high school, that's more accurate. And then uh, what the definition of a request and enrolled for uh, so a student can meet with the school counselor and make a request for make requests uh, for courses to enroll in, and then do they actually get enrolled in the course? Given room and the master schedule, schedule, which is the biggest bear. I mean, okay. this is the what we're looking at is in you know the master schedule is. is usually the area that we have most concern uh, because it, it seems to be the area that we can do the most about. It's a little deceptive because it's, there's a lot of factors that go into the master schedule. And for those of us who've been on the board a while, we've been here this every year forever about the master schedule. Yeah, but there are any other questions about this chart? Um, this uh, general music um, number of requests, NA, and then number enrolled? It's just offered this year, right? But it started last year. Uh, we, uh, so when we look at um, the year 2011-12, uh, there were no requests because we didn't offer it. We just enrolled middle school students, and it's a middle school course. Oh, so nice. Yeah, yeah. We had room in their schedule. We had room in the teacher's schedule. And we felt that this was a way for, especially for, it, it was primarily students who are not enrolled in band, middle school band or chorus, and we, there, before that, there was no music class for students who weren't already singing or playing an instrument. So that's why we created general music. Okay. Created in the hopes of 
about the motion positions. Yeah. Yeah. We'll need to track that. And see if they so is there one thing that you can see here that's getting continual, like where these kids are getting, that, that comes up as the big rub? I mean, or is it just, like, for every particular music offering, it's a different course that they're bumping up against, so, right? That's, um, I would say there are three issues. Okay. Uh, the, the first issue is that to enroll in high school band or chorus, it, it takes up 25% of your schedule all year, mm -hmm. which, which is huge. Uh, there are, uh, you know, you need four years of science to graduate, which is new for a freshman, four years of English, and, and uh, but that's only one semester, so I shouldn't even say four years, it's four credits. So there really is nothing else in our, our course offerings in which a student would have fall and spring in the same subject area. Now some students do want to do two maths in a year or two sciences in a year, but that's the exception. Whereas our expectation for high school band and chorus, correct me if I'm wrong, is we want them to be in it all year. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very big expectation. So that, that's one thing that um, emerged for me in this process. The other is that by basically every measure, our, uh, we are disproportionately representing students um, who are from middle or upper uh, income families. And it, that's not, rep and the, with our changing demographics, if we don't uh, make attempts to attract our, our meatier students, we will continue to see de declining enrollment. Uh, or, I mean, I'd like to say that we're going to stop at 44% pre-reduced meals eligibility. We'll get a big recovery coming right up, so maybe we'll go in the opposite direction. Uh, and the same is true of a learning plan, because about 30 to 40% of our students have some form of learning plan, whether it's special education, EST, um, or, or um, a 504 plan. Uh, we have, at this point, like 70 reg regular education students who have an EST plan. It's a huge number of kids. Basically, why do they why do they have an EST plan? Because they're failing more than one of their classes, and so we're so they're underrepresented, uh, uh, underrepresented as well. So mm -hmm. I would love to include in the say, EST process. You're failing math. Why don't you learn an instrument? I mean, I, I, I say that. With, with all honesty, you know, the, 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 those are some of the factors we're, that we're looking at. Are you challenged enough in school? Are you taking a foreign language? Uh, so, so those are the, the three things that I glean out of looking at the enrollment. Besides the fact that the overall enrollment of the school, it's, it's, you know, with, with shrinking enrollment, um, we had about 450 students 10 years ago, and now we have 365. So that, that's, a, that's huge. And if we look at where did that we lose that population in Dover and New Fame, we're talking 70 kids, perhaps. I mean, I, can, I have the document open so I can tell you how, exactly how many fewer kids we have from those towns, which were the our higher income towns. So that's all part of this puzzle. Um, what our feeders are our elementary school kids, and how is that going? Do they take band? Do they? you know, do chorus. Well, I guess they all do chorus, but are they doing instruments? And I, I think our music teachers can tell us more, yeah. the parents too. Yeah. Um, oh, I, there, there are good numbers in band. Not all schools have chorus, but, um, but, but both uh, but the schools where I teach, um, we have chorus and, and that's doing well, and band is doing well. I wonder what happens between elementary school and... I think it's scheduled. Well, yeah, kids, kids have a choice, and the, there is a choice sometimes in the elementary school, but generally it's part of the program. Uh, the instrumental music is usually a choice, but... No, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's, yeah. Yeah. And it involves extra commitment from parents to continue in the elementary school band program, which might... Um, be part of why some kids don't um, don't continue from from the free and reduced lunch kids. They need parental support in order to be able to 
keep it up, and so those kids often quit. That's I don't know what to do about that. We need to get better parents. I did. I, uh, um, I had a lot of stuff to say, and I don't know. I'm I'm feeling like I'm maybe going to back out on some of it, but um. The situation of high school music, I'm just throwing this out, is really bad at the moment. Um, uh, the, the numbers on this are, even though they are correct in some ways, don't really paint the picture. Can I jump in for just a second? Sure. Speaking simply for high school band, I don't have 13 students. I have 10, and three of whom leave halfway through the rehearsal. So that leaves me with seven. My son is one of them because seven. we could not get yeah. So, so I'm sorry, Ron. I just want to say that, that the, not all the numbers are all the way correct. Well, yeah. it's total for the year. Yeah. So over the course of the year, you'll have great. Right, there are 13 students in high school band. Oh, okay. You don't have, see, that's part of the problem. That, yeah. You know, we have it a semester schedule for men, the majority of our courses. So okay. We don't know we mean to sound defensive or anything. No, but, I don't mean to but sound, that sound number offensive. Is right. <laughs> yeah. and, I don't either, but the chorus number for high school chorus as well. In my class is 10 students now. It's not 16, and it's the same thing. There are six more that are signed up to be in in one semester. Um, this, uh, a lot of these students that are signed up that aren't there aren't there because the only section of chemistry is during band and chorus. So juniors who are who are the leaders of our band and chorus have been scheduled out this year. Last year it was... Matt, it I haven't been in band and chorus in, since freshman year because I had to take my math classes and not have chemistry. <laughs> so you always do it. I have band as an independent study right now because it alternates with my driver's ed class, but um, a lot of the time I get taken out because I have to I was in band last semester because of Germany, but that's the only time since freshman year that I've been in. And Evans is Chinese. If he hadn't been able to fit in Chinese this year, he needed Chinese too because he already finished Chinese one in middle school. So he hadn't had Chinese since first half of the year of eighth grade, and they didn't, they weren't able to put it in the schedule at all for ninth grade. So he would have had the entire ninth grade year as a gap and lose all of his achievement in that class, and he was a 98 in that class, and not have for a whole year, how would he have retained all of that? So we cut band in half so that he could stick with band, which is a requirement in our house that our children take part in some form of music, and still be able to give him that Chinese piece, his foreign language. That was exactly the choice that we faced. My son ended up doing the full band program instead of taking Chinese 2 for half of the band program. So by the time he gets into Chinese 2, he's going to have been out for a year and a half um, away from the language. And that's if he can't get into it next year. Um. And so I think I have to bring this up because I don't think it's been public yet. And um, uh, we've had several meetings, and I have so much respect for you. I really do. And I think the things that you're doing, in the, 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 the time and effort you put into the school is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But we haven't really had a substantive scheduling talk. And they have always asked about two years ago, and I don't know if it came from you or somebody else, um, the idea that band should be before school in, in something called zero period, which when you're feeling marginalized and to have somebody say, how about zero period, it's not a good start. Mm -hmm. But then the idea is that band starts before school, before the buses get there, at maybe seven o'clock. We don't we never discuss the exact time. But there's no 
no, nobody's going to give them a ride except parents. There's no provision to get the kids to this class. And 14-year-olds don't drive. And I have the idea that most, most parents will find it to be a hardship to bring their kid to school every day for four years or until they get their driver's license for a whole year. Especially for We have the, the second largest geographical area of mm -hmm. any supervisory union in the state. Kids come from 40 minutes away, which means that a parent would have to drive their kid, some parents would have to drive, if they're coming from Dover or Wardsburg, they drive half an hour, 40 minutes one way, drive back, or it just seems so insurmountable that it's almost for sure to kill everything completely. I feel like also that I, there's been discussion in this board, I think, about teenagers' sleep habits and, and how they really are no good in the morning. Um, so let's give them ban. I, 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 I was a parent, you know, I still am a parent, but I was a parent of a high school student for a number of years. And getting up in the morning is not a, a simple chore. And getting up in the morning an hour earlier than is needed is not something that's going to last. So I feel very strongly that that suggestion is the death knell to the music department. I don't mean to be uh, dramatic here, but that's a feeling I have. And I don't know, if I'm wrong, somebody tell me. Do you want to talk about ninth period? Um, I don't know if I was supposed to, but I brought it up today um, in band, and I was surprised at the negative reaction of the students. About yeah. the zero? No, uh, nine, nine period, which is uh, sort of after. Uh, we after heard about it at the dinner strong. table tonight. Did <laughs> <you>? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and they're not at home. And, you know, I, I'm going to play my naivety card here. I don't really know I'm brand new, and I live up in Chippewa County. Um, but, you know, students cited sports, drama, transportation, jobs, homework. Those were the, the biggies, I would say, that for my seven kids that, that came out of that discussion. Some of them have to work. Um, I'm wondering if that's an economic uh, necessity. Um, but uh, that was really the response. I got uh, personally, I'm somewhat open to that idea as long as if, if, well, I was until mm -hmm. I heard that feedback. Um, I was under the impression that most high school sports begin at 4 o'clock. But I guess that's really mostly true in the fall. In the winter, that changes. Well, that's and non game days. I mean, if they have a game, sometimes they're getting out at quarter after two or earlier if they're traveling. But yeah, Evan cited homework, and um, because the high schoolers will use that time directly after school until four o'clock to do their homework. I mean, Evan knows his butt better be in the library and I find out otherwise. <laughs> um, you know, that's their time because then it's sports till six, then they get home and it's dinner and it's finishing up any homework and still getting to bed at a decent hour. You know, so that they're not, so that they're not, um, you know, up all night. Um, so I, I just also want to say another thing that we started talking about uh, for the first time is looking at Bander course being a period long uh, for the year, which it would be an eighth of the day. So let's just say a student chooses to do band that's an eighth of the day rather than a quarter of the day for the that, year. So that might make a big that's difference. That's something I'd like to talk about. Our discussions have always ended with what about zero period? And I said I don't want to do it, and that was the end. We don't, there's no more discussion. Um, that is a possibility. Um, it's, it's a step backwards, but if it could get kids in the door, the, the problems, the easy to, to, to kind of all problems this for us are that it seems like then being a course, I think still might be better but at the same time means we would share kids. It would mean we'd only have, they would cut down on rehearsal time a lot. So, so if um, I, I'm and, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. we're done, sorry. Go ahead. And we only have one music group. Um, so it would mean, and it's possible. I, in fact, when I first started here, I did chorus in the French room. 
right across there. It, and it, I, that's part of why I know why I don't want to do it. Because it was awful. I had to play the piano behind my back, and the kids had to sit, 30 kids had to sit on the front of the desks. And uh, it was just really not conducive to what we were trying to do. But we did a good job anyway. And so there's some possibility of bending in that way. That's the, actually what I'm saying. And, and it's never been discussed. This is the first time that we've ever thought about this. You know, right now, band is every other day, supposedly, for, for a quarter block. For a quarter block. And then it would go, Duran, you're putting it as, um, you're proposing it to be a period long every day, all year? Not a block. Not right. right. I, I mean, it's something that is worthy of discussion. So yeah. I don't know right. if it's every day or every other day. I mean, now you're saying, well, maybe it's scheduled at the same time so we can share kids. And this is all part of, I mean, we've been talking about this yeah. for, you know, two and a quarter years at least. And uh, assuming we're talking about So uh, what I think too, it really so. needs is um, this. Um, and the computer doesn't know everything. I, I, and I don't want to suggest anybody does a lot more work, but I think it, it needs a lot more work. We had some of these parents that are here advocated for their kids and got closer to what they wanted. Um, and I think we need to advocate for all the kids. I think we have to go through the whole <coughs> explicit deleted um, schedule and say, how's this kid's schedule looking? Did they get what they need? Are they going? And, and I know this, the, the, the counselors do that somewhat, but they don't see the whole thing. And there's, it, it needs to stay in flux for long enough so that you can actually, there's also, I, there's the concept that doesn't have to do with music, but kids are different. And there are some kids that don't do so well together. And all that, that I think we need to spend four times as much on the schedule. And I know this, mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. and hours mm -hmm. and hours are already spent. Mm -hmm. And that's not possible check. because the school is small. <laughs> I mean, that, that mm -hmm. causes the problem of only having one section. Of Jay has a question. Go ahead, Jay. Um, at one time, Leland and Gray had a library music program. Mm -hmm. right. And what was the scheduling like back then? And can we go back? Uh, uh, well, I mean, I'll just tell you from my perspective, and Stephen could answer it much better, but I've never heard that there's ever been a year where the scheduling hasn't been an issue. For every every single year, there's always issues with kids. When my kids were here, there were issues with getting into music programs or getting into higher level academic programs or whatever. I mean, yeah, it's but it's the point is that we time. really did have a library. We had 40 kids. Well, well, I, well, right. I was just talking about the schedule. Right, but he, his question been a was, but he, his question was, how were we able to have 40 kids? I believe. Well, well, what was different back yeah. then than yeah. where they yeah. have today? That change word is strong. <sighs> Um, there were the science requirements. Right. There, yeah. there right. wasn't a push to have kids do math early in their careers. Right. The, the, the academic push has been, been much bigger. As we know, as we've sat we, here on the board we, we, and we've talked about this over and over again, we've been looking at data, we've been looking at test scores, we've been looking at all different levels of feedback from every angle. And we, what we've come down to, as you all know, is that we need to strengthen our academic program to make sure our students are prepared for life beyond here. Now, music is a part of that. There is no question music is a part of that. A full education, we've all said, a, a full, well-rounded education is critical to our students' success in the future. Um, but, but as time has gone on, honestly, there are more, there, I mean, if you all remember, we were sitting here um, a couple of years ago with the same kinds of requests over foreign language, too. And, what we've done, we've strengthened that mm -hmm. area as well. But I mean, honestly, this is, uh, it can happen in any department, I would assume, you know, wherever there's... Well, there's also s six sections of French, six sections of Chinese, yeah. six plus independent right. studies that the foreign language teachers take on. We have one section of band. Mm -hmm. So that's another, another, another thing that we're... It, it, it's, it's like immovable in the schedule. It's, it's not, uh, kids, when we do the hand scheduling, which happens for every student, uh, that is something you can see is that in algebra, 
I mean, we just, when school started, we realized we had to open up a third section of algebra because it, it was oh, basically over enrolled. It was new for us because it's required for all freshmen who haven't had it before. So we were able to do that because we had three teachers. So three sections of algebra one in one period. And, but band is in, in, in one block with one teacher and in one facility. And grades nine through 12. In grades nine through 12, yes. Mm -hmm. So, but also, Jay, I think it's um, important to, and I don't know if the numbers show this so much, but I am curious about the, the for high school band, Two years or three, yeah, two years ago, um, there were 29 requests. This year, it's it's 19. Now there may have been a couple of kids who, who didn't get to the request point because it sounds like well, Zoe had to make some. Other, I don't know if you requested music or not. I'm actually enrolled in band, and one of those 13 kids that's taking it back. Oh, I see. Right oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. Now, there are. I do think that there were some kids. I I'm not sure, but I think that the requests are the ones of the kids who got entered into the computer mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. requesting it. Mm -hmm. I do think that there were some kids who needed to get so many classes. They want band, but it's just obvious. If you're gonna take two math classes and, and assign, you know, th there were kids that had to do that. And so their, their eight blocks are full. So it wasn't requested because it was just not, it was a moot point. They knew it, right. They knew that it wasn't gonna be possible. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't request it. And I must say that the, with these tiny numbers, recruitment is, recruitment, uh, all the best musicians that have come out of Leland and Gray, m many of the best musicians that have come out of Leland and Gray, cite a particular kid, usually three or four years ahead of them, mm -hmm. that was there like they saw. Mm -hmm. I saw Tessa Anderson, and I wanted to be her. <laughs> I, you know, that's what they say. The ones that are still playing say that was it. So now, in, in the next concert, we're only going to have a couple of kids. It's 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 spiraling down, and the new kids aren't saying I want to be that kid because that kid is not there. Okay, thank you, Ron. There's a couple hands up, and I know not want to say something else. Go ahead, Patty. Actually, a couple of thoughts. Um, would, could this, like this year, be like a transition year because you are doing more academic requirements early on? Could that mean that possibly as kids are older, get up in the higher grades, they can fit band in easier, do you think? There are plenty of kids with free tests. Plenty of juniors and seniors who have, who have, uh, you know, one block a day. That's that's okay. they have. That they're, 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 they're in the mm -hmm. library or they're in the cafeteria. Okay. So the, the the students are here. I I am concerned about our changing demographics and who okay. is actually choosing to be. Yeah. In, yeah. In and, well, I had one more thing. Oh, Hold on, just one more thing. Um, I do know that this whole thing is a concern at the college level also. Because I happen to, when I drop Sarah off at school, go do a tour of the performing arts library. I did a library thing. And, um, and they mentioned the fact that a lot of high schools are cutting music and that that's a problem for them. When, and it's, it's causing issues for the continuation of their programs in the higher education level because they don't have so many kids coming in prepared for college level music and World that's street. a concern for them. I have something please to add to that because I've read studies about um, students, children who have been brought up in music that their brains are able to function in out-of-the-box thinking and different dynamics because they've had that training in music. And um, I mean, and that's sad for me to hear that with the colleges because we're having all these pushes for academics, and of course, academics is absolutely an important, the most important piece. But music should be right there. Music should be considered as part of academics because it's. It's helping your brain. Right, we've had we've had reports you know, on that at the yeah. board level here as yeah. well. I just wanted 
to mention very briefly that it's been my experience, and I've taught for a number of years at other schools, is that if students don't do band in freshman or sophomore year, you don't get them back. Right. They're gone. Yeah. Think about the length of a year to a 14-year-old. You know, it's a lifetime practically. And, and, and so while I'd love to have juniors and seniors, you gotta give if them we lose them in ninth mm -hmm. or 10th grade, they're gone. So does the board have any other questions about this specifically? Because one of the things I just want to caution about is that I, I, I mean, I think this is really important, and, uh, and I'm thrilled that we've had this kind of feedback and everything, but we don't touch the schedule. It's not in our, um, you know, it's not part of our job. So I think it's really important that we share if music is of value to us as board members and that we, I think, <laughs> I think I can speak for the board because I think we've always supported the music program, but we've also always supported um, the other academic and elective courses or programs that we have here, and there are <coughs> many in this school, um, and we have never uh, shown anything but support for that. We also support the administration, and and. Um, well, I'm curious, Doreen, will, will you t explore? Are you? It sounds like you guys are going to be willing to explore um, the idea of course being at least one hour. Like, oh, that's the yeah, time trying to figure out a place to go. I think she's here. talking about the one period. Yeah, the one period. We've been we've been in conversation trying since to move I started this. here to, to, to come up with a solution. Who decides? Yeah. What, um, sorry, Emily, I have a question about what you just said. Who does decide how the scheduling goes um, for the school as a whole? Like block, like this year, I was very pleased to see that we're doing some period long classes. We're doing you know these modified block scheduling where we've got global studies and math going year round. You know, the math is a big thing. I'm really excited about that they're going to have all year round yeah. so that they keep that. You know, they're, they're practicing their skills all year and not have that. And that, and that, know, that so comes from, that? The, that comes from the, the administration and they actually came to us last year and spoke to us about modify block. They're investigating and mm -hmm. looking at it. That, I mean, Duran could answer that question more. The board certainly has no um, ability to so work in that area. So you're saying it's Doreen so and the staff at it's, it's, that it's the administration's that? Okay. responsibility, and then they set up a team. I think is yes, the way it works. Yes, there's a team um, of three other people. Okay. In addition to myself. Thank you. And, mm -hmm. uh, there are other suggestions that we've talked about. We don't have to list every single one of them mm -hmm. in terms of uh, recruitment strategies and uh, keeping students up with their music lessons, whether they can actually enroll in the in band or chorus. Right. And add, um, having uh, students being middle school students being able to earn high school credit in band if they meet a certain level of proficiency that was something we started last year. So we're, we're it, it's not that the issue's been dormant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I haven't found a middle school kid yet that understood why they would want a high school credit in music. The only thing that that gets them is that they wouldn't have to take music in high school. Boy, we don't have that problem with foreign language. Yeah. No, oh, well, the, and and our and you know, and soon grades, yeah. um, okay. the third and fourth levels foreign language are going to be getting college credit. So mm -hmm. maybe that's another direction that we can head in with a dual credit for the upper level students in band and chorus. That's creative thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just observe uh, to reinforce what Emily is pointing out in terms of the role and responsibility of administration versus the board and so forth. Is the board decides the goals and the outcomes we seek, and and provides the means for those. And then the, you know the details of how that comes about really is a matter of a collaborative, uh, continuing collaborative discussion uh, and reflective practice with the, with the staff and 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 uh, and Durant and the administrative leadership. Um, I, I caution us all to <coughs> make sure that we remain on the positive about what can happen and what can be done, rather than constantly fall back on, well, you know, this we can't control. I mean, there were some jokes about some things here that I, you know, I think we should caution ourselves in the public discussion. I mean, we should be engaging in this challenge professionally, uh, and we, we certainly should be uh, exploring uh, all the things that we control. We control, this, when I say we, the administration and the, and the uh, staff, control uh, many of the inputs that are possible to make a program happen. The time, the schedule, the personnel, the, the contract in many schools 
you have no ability to change a teacher's contract or adjust the uh, uh, hours of employment. In fact, in this uh, SU, uh, we are able to do that. So you can be creative, uh, more creative than some other places. I mean, I'm trying to just emphasize the positive attributes we have. We certainly have very good uh, teachers, you know, very gifted people with a great record of performance. Uh, we don't have, uh, we may say, okay, we don't have enough kids. Well, I'd point out uh, that if we had all the kids in the world and the biggest schools possible, let's say Brattleboro with 1,300 students, how many do they have in band? Around 100. It's less than 10%. But on the contrary, Stephen, we went and visited Mill River this past spring, and they're closer to our numbers, and they have an extremely vibrant band, and we have a kind of an example of their So that's the schedule. kind of creative work that has mm -hmm. to be pursued so that we can see what they're doing right. and if it is transferable. We don't need to remake the wheel here. Right. We need to be exploring what is happening. If you want the extreme example, you can go to Frank Rucker's alma mater, and 100% of the people are in band. Well, in this the elementary school, uh, my son's there right now, right. you know, the, the concerts of third through sixth graders, it's a pretty substantial number of students that are in those between chorus and band, and that those students are falling off. And I, I guess my, my concern, the concern I've heard from a number of people that I'm represented here, is that they want a good college preparatory right. high school for their child. They want to be able to have four years of music in chorus or band, one or the other, and take rigorous academic work, and they're feeling rock and hard place. And that kid has to drop one of those four years to take this to take this academic course they really want to take, or they're not taking the academic course because they want to stay in band of course for four years. And that and is if a significant. Get out of that rock. Whether you have a vibrant music program or a waning music program. Well, it's yeah. a significant yeah. difference so, compared to ten years ago, too. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I think I think that would be the issue at hand that is an administrative issue. Now. But we need to. We need to try to address it in a creative and a positive way. I have a couple of other ideas noted here, but actually I don't think the board meeting is the right. time for the ideas to be debated or discussed. It really needs to come at the professional level within the building. So I'm going to share those with the Well, well, well the one thing I, I, I'm going to just say that I, um, if the board disagrees with me, you can speak up, but that we support <laughs> what Jeremy just said. We want to be able to have our kids have a vibrant music program, a vibrant foreign language program, vibrant academics, you name it. We, we support that, um, but, but we are very cautious about we don't run the school. You know, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's critical to us to make sure that our kids' our needs are being met. So we lean to the administration and we look at outcomes. I will say that I'm very optimistic about this SU because none of my boards are test scores obsessed. Many of my colleagues have boards that oh. say, all I care about is a kneecap. Get the darn kneecap up. We don't have that situation in this, in this region, in our schools. Okay, we certainly have to be concerned about whether we're in adequate yearly progress. We certainly have to be concerned about whether kids can perform adequately in mathematics and in language arts in the 11th grade. That's a problem we've got in this school. But the, the boards at the elementary school level are not cutting nor directing the administration <coughs> to cut the arts, to cut music, to cut uh, PE. In fact, uh, the rationale, one of the rationales for Brookline New Thing combining was to get more PE uh, music opportunity uh, for the students. And counseling. So, you know, we have a lot of things going for us here, but we have to build on it from the elementary level and look at it at the long long term because, as Jeremy says, there are lots of kids involved in the elementary school. So uh, it's, it's not going to be an easy uh, solution, but I, I do want to uh, make sure that you are sharing with me, either as board members or as uh, parents, uh, your concerns about the issue. And what solutions, as you just uh, suggested, uh, you know, are, are, are worth pursuing. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chairperson, following Stephen's input, can I end this on a 
happy note? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I'm happy. I'm a happy guy. Um, we've started a technology of music course. It will take less than a minute. Uh, technology of music course here at Leland and Gray, and students lear learn uh, music theory, music composition, psychology, physiology. They work on writing skills. Um, we're off to a pretty good start. We've got about five kids, but the really happy thing I wanted to share with you is that one of my former students from Mount Mansfield, who is a sound engineer, has been very successful, and he gave us, uh, a, as long as we wanted, a loan of about $15,000 worth of uh, sound and recording equipment. Wow. So, I just wanted to share that, and it's a happy thing. Yeah. So, that's, that's Thank you. Good news. Any other questions? And, and thank you. I know this was a big chunk of time. Thanks Very important for us all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect answer. Okay. All right. We'll move on to where were we? We'll go. Oh, we've got back to the train. Sorry. Okay. You had a hand up here. We can let you get into that. Yeah. And um, speaking of thank yous. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't get one? No, if there are more, that's fine. I just, if there are... Do you extra? Um, yep, we do. Oh, Thanks. Sorry about that. Sure. It's just easier for me to so be able to see. Yeah, so I'll sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Emily, I, I don't know yep. if I copy you on a, a thank you note to uh, Ralph Coleman and no, Charlie you didn't. Martin. I didn't. I didn't know. Okay. Okay. I didn't hear about I meant that. to do that. So I wrote on behalf of the board a, a thank you to uh, Ralph Coleman, Charlie Marchant, um, and I can't think of our, our third our third person that joined that group. I will, and I'll make sure the uh, make sure the uh, correspondence is, is in your box so we, we can Thanks. make it official. But uh, uh, they went out to Somerset um, over the summer and did some trail clearing on the Leland and Gray property, and uh, it was really really uh, neat to see their commitment to uh, etching out the boundary lines and um, wow. prepping the site for. Uh, for student use, and general community use. So, um, That's great. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for writing that. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's see. A couple things. I was going to follow up on Durin's uh, enrollment report. Uh, um, just a quick, quick point of reference related to our budget plan versus our uh, current enrollment. Um, so our budget plan was. 367 students. That that was in the, you, this document here that you may remember, and uh, you have it's our enrollment uh, chart uh, projection. Uh, Duran mentioned about 360 kids. Uh, that number will change. We know that will change um, sometimes weekly. Uh, but when we look at um, tuition students, um, unfortunately, you know the the numbers that we're looking at between where we thought we would be based on. Uh, existing enrollment, what we knew last November when we are putting together the budget in terms of sixth graders coming into the system, seniors leaving, that was 367, now we're looking at um, 359, 360, something like that. And um, uh, most or if not all of the, the variance is in tuition students. So at, at this point, uh, if nothing changes, we, we have a significant um, revenue deficit. Um, which is not not what we obviously would prefer as we go into the budget planning season. But um, a revenue deficit is exactly the same as an expenditure uh, deficit in that it's, it has an impact on the tax rate, and we have to make it up. We have to we have to put a, a you know a reserve in the appropriation to to balance that. So we'll keep an eye on that, um, and I will keep you posted. Uh, what develops? Yeah, I just want to make sure that we recognize that this is part of the national trend, and certainly Vermont's trend of declining enrollment. You, you can't really expect to maintain your tuition students if the numbers are all going down out there. You can you can claim a greater share of the population out there, but it's that's a, that's that's a stretch. So in fact. You know, our, we're realizing what's happening. If there aren't so many students in Dover or there aren't so many students in Wardsboro, Wardsboro is down 10 kids this year from 72 to 62, mm. 61. Well, you know, That's this huge. is this this is coming our way at Leland yeah. and Well, we've known it, and and we do we we do uh, talk with principals. Uh, 
in the uh, tuition towns, um, and our, our numbers are based on the current sixth graders that are in those uh, schools in November, December, January when we're doing our planning. Mm -hmm. right. So this this is not based on just a historical average. It's 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 based on who, who, which sixth graders were in Wardsboro, Dover, um, Marlboro, Stratton. You know, yeah. we we contact the principal. We ask for input. What do you think the family's thinking? They give us a number. We budget that. That number uh, has historically been pretty accurate. This year, it's off significantly. Um, and we have no feedback on what the reason is behind. Yeah, actually, we're we we have like Stephen mentioned in Wardsboro. I think there's three families that moved out unexpectedly. Um, that's one of our largest losses. Um, so when you so so what you're saying is then it's just people moving out, not people choosing to. I mean, there's some schools that are. We all know what happened over in Dover. Yeah, um, yeah. Are we losing to Burn Burden? Are we losing to? I don't you know, know the answer to that. Yeah. No, Dover I, uh, is another another town. We expected eight, and we have four. Yeah, that's a that's a Burn Burden phenomenon. There, they're running a bus over there. So. Yeah, and we used to have 20, yeah, 27 I that Dover they were students. actually providing transportation in Dover now for yeah. Burn Burden. Burn Burden. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Wardsboro isn't in that situation. I don't have any indication there on that one. And of course, we're as we said before, we're getting students from Athens, with, for for whom we don't and, and graduate. You don't get any money. Get the, we get right. it in the, we get the tuition seventh grade. Seventh grade, right? right. Um, so well, it's so certainly. Well, these fifteen are not seventh and eighth graders. No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I right. I'm sure the right. board understands that. But oh, okay. I, when she said that we don't get any money for students from that, those two towns, I want to make sure we recognize seventh and eighth grade we do. So, yeah. Uh, That's so good. There, yeah, and I was I wrote down your national trend lines. I mean, what what are the trends? We we have to make sure that we're planning accordingly. But also to listen to what um, Bruce and Megan were sharing with us in our music uh, program advocates. You know how important it is to to be in the elementary schools to um, to get kids excited about the transition to Leland Gray and to, you know, to share that success, it's, that's just terrific uh, success. And it, it, it is, a, it, you know, there is a lot of opportunity to change, change the direction. I think we've got some very passionate people that are doing that. So, um, and, and then we know also that the Journey East program is being extended into a student foreign exchange program. Um, and I believe we have two foreign exchange students for the first time um, where we are charging tuition. Um, uh, and that is a, as a result of going through a certification program uh, with, uh, with the government, the federal government, um, so that we are a, a certified institution and able to charge, um, charge a tuition, as Burden Burden is and as uh, Linden Institute and, and other independent schools. We're probably one of the few public schools that are that are doing this, and we hope that that grows. Yeah, the first in the state. So, um, okay. the financial report. I'll keep it very brief. This this is not the usual it's format different. that that I will be providing you. I, I did give you this as just as a uh, a sample and maybe a progress report. Uh, I've reported before, and Stephen has uh, shared with all the boards that we've gone to a new. Uh, financial system that integrates human resource, contract management uh, with uh, payroll and accounts payable, also the general ledger, financial reporting, capital asset uh, counting, um, and cash management. So it's a much more comprehensive system than what we were using. We, we have gone to this uh, more robust system uh, primarily because of the growing demands of of the Department of Education and the, the Federal uh, Department of Education for uh, accountability of public public funds um, and uh, the changes in the industry, the, the, the Governmental Accounting Standard Board's requirements for, for reporting. So j I just wanted to spend a moment on the, the major shift here. And you see this very long string of numbers on the first column. Um, just, just very quickly, 
this is what's driving uh, so much of the data collection that we are required to do. This is not uh, optional generally. Um, so um, we, we have created a chart of accounts that is uh, in compliance basically with what the Commissioner of Education expects all public schools to report. And then uh, it does become the basis of, of our funding. Um, so the accuracy of, of the reporting is crucial. So just quickly, what, what you're looking at is a a, an account structure that, that defines the fund. Fund, is our, uh, fund one is our general fund, which is a taxpayer-funded uh, um, group of activity. Uh, the next set of digits is the program. Uh, program is direct instruction or food services, or you'll see later on in this chart, a 900 is after school program. Uh, so there's a variety of programs. Uh, the next set of digits are the functions. So those are the ones you're probably most familiar with. Functions would be uh, the music program, the art program, the science program, social studies, uh, and then there's, there's support services, administration, board, um, uh, building, and so on. Those are the functional groups that are all having a, a unique identity. The next string is object. Uh, the three-digit codes are are things we buy, uh, salaries, benefits, uh, professional services, uh, equipment, and so on. Uh, we are now capturing uh, level, uh, grade level. Uh, throughout the supervisory union, this is a very, it will be the first time we're able to differentiate spending uh, in accounting systems by, um, by grade level, whether it's uh, preschool, um, K through 6, or 7 through 12. And then the, the, the set of digits that are all zeros at the end, those are project numbers. Uh, in the general fund, everything gets crushed into one number, as you know, and that's the number um, that we either offset against the tax rate at the end of the year because it's a surplus, uh, or it's the number that we have to add to the budget appropriation because it's a deficit. And so, for example, if nothing changes with the revenue uh, forecast, you know, we're looking at a uh, 100,000 plus uh, addition. And, um, but, but in our other programs, we have uh, our special revenue fund, we have a trust fund, we have a capital fund, we have a student activity fund. They all have project numbers, and so they wouldn't be all a bunch of zeros there. They would all have a unique number because uh, Tom Connor wants to know what his Journey East program is, and Ann wants to know what her uh, theater program is, and all of those are tracked by a project number. Um, 21st, so 21st century, was 21st example. century, and so on. Uh, so this is this is just a little bit of the sort of the, the uh, detail. You you actually do see this in the annual report, the budget. Uh, I think that there's more interest in in uh, moving towards summary level information in in budget presentation formats, um, so that people can absorb this information uh, in, a, in a more analytical way, which is things like, you know, what are we spending on direct instruction? How much are we spending on administration? Um, what are we spending on capital and so on? When you're presented with information as traditionally we have in our annual reports, you know, you're giving people a lot of detail, but it's hard for them to do much uh, analysis. And uh, this new structure, lends itself to comparative sort of information from school to school and uh, supervisor union to supervisor union. Uh, so that's why we are moving toward it. I just want to assure you that Frank has no intention of subjecting you to this amount of detail on a, day, on a monthly that's basis. That's right. Yes. He just wanted to make sure, and I certainly supported his effort to, uh, you know, let a few of his board members know what the basis for the new uh, accounting system is and the detail and the thought that goes into it so that you can ask the questions and we can come up with the answers in a much more uh, efficient way regarding our investments and allocation of resources. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to follow when I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm looking at, and it's pretty easy to follow the functions and mm -hmm. they're not all exactly the same, but they're pretty darn close. They are. So it's yeah. easy to take it right, take you right to the yeah. annual report and what we publish. But the, the, the intent, this is, a, this is, I'm showing you the evolution of the transition, and this is just where we are. Uh, I wouldn't show you this if I was through this phase, but 
Um, we, we've just uh, finished the payroll transition, which is obviously critical. Folks expect to get paid. They did get paid on, on uh, August 31st uh, under the new system. Um, this is my first crack at the, uh, the financial statement reporting. But what will come is a, uh, a statement that rolls up, much like you're, you were accustomed to seeing a one-page document that um, provides the key uh, summary level uh, expenditure items. And then we will have a balance sheet, but I, I need to go through the audit, which is uh, scheduled for later this month, close those balances in the old system, and then uh, transfer them into the new system, and then I can start giving you the usual balance sheet, you know, assets, liabilities, and fund balance, and then uh, a one-page uh, revenue and expense uh, report. Maybe no, so because it's so broken out, and, and could, can you say, I'm just looking through for things that jump out at me, like uh, all the different departments and textbooks as a line item. Mm -hmm. Could you say just, can you have a reorganize and just be textbooks as a line item for all the different, sure. you know, and thinking that we're going to fall short with enrollment and projected budget and looking through at the, let's say, thousands and thousands of dollars that I can obviously see already that if the actual is accurate, that means that school started and no textbooks were bought with the textbook money. Mm -hmm. So then you can maybe make the logical jump that they didn't need the textbooks for the school year and we could budget for the beginning of next school year that mm -hmm. textbook or some Yep. That kind of thought process toward as the year goes on, looking at what's been spent and not spent. Sure. Yeah, and the the, the information will be readily available for that sort of analysis. J just that particular example, where there actually has been many textbooks uh, purchased, but um, but we had to do it under the the legacy system. Mm -hmm. So those transactions, as I was saying, but I wasn't um, specific. Mm -hmm. All of those transactions won't come into this system until the auditors come in and say, okay, we agree with the financial report, uh, then then we'll transfer. So there's probably $10,000 worth of textbooks in the, in the former accounting system. When we bring it in, you'll see this and it will right. be what you would expect. Um, so I, in, in fact, I think Doreen and I have met about um, uh, making sure that, that we do accommodate those additional numbers that she was referring to in algebra that weren't anticipated. Um, so we'll actually exceed our textbook budget this year, but we'll we'll make sure we conserve in the supply budget. So well, yeah, I live, as a teacher, I lived through a budget freeze to deal with the budget shortfall. And But then also as a teacher, I've heard teachers talk about, oh, I've still got $500 in my budget left. I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff which would be used in the next school year. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's wiggle there sometimes sure. in some budgets, and that would be a place to um, try to make up some of that shortfall if we can. Or maybe it is, or maybe that's, yeah, I don't know, if that's something we've done that in the past. Yeah, that's really the fiscal control responsibility of the principal and the CFO, you know, in terms of approval of the so what's, been, what's been very good at Newman and Gray uh, is that the teachers have embraced this, this yeah. sense of, uh, of uh, accountability. Uh, our, as you've seen, our budget document is 30 pages, and it's 30 pages because it's a line item plan. And so um, with our electronic uh, requisition system, the teacher basically recognizes what was approved by Durin in the plan. They, s they select those account numbers. It's integrated into the system that says, oh, here's the plan for $4,000 of textbooks. They, they process their request, and it updates the general ledger so that there's continuity, there's control, there's, um, there's uh, you know, a, a result that, that we expect. Um, fortunately, uh, the Leland Gray teachers have, have been very willing to to use the system, we're looking to roll this out into the elementary schools as well, because uh, they're still using manual uh, processes. They, they write out a requisition and then uh, call in an order, and that's, yeah. So we're excited, but uh, it's just a tremendous. Uh, it's been a tremendous amount of work. So uh, um, I, I know. It, this is more for the for Stephen and Dorin, and I'm sure they've done this. Uh, any opportunity you have to to.
to compliment um, the staff in, in the buildings about supporting the process. And it's primarily Carol and Janess at Leland and Gray, uh, who's just doing a tremendous amount of learning, using t two systems, and uh, under a great deal of time pressure. To, um, right. to, to make this transition. Well, so. I hope you'll thank her and all the others for us as well. I mean, I we do. I have, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. this is this is about 300 accounts so that you're looking at, and that's the fund one, and we have, right. as I mentioned, the fund five, seven, nine, and fund eight. And then we at this supervisor union, the chart of accounts is about twice as big as this. And then we have uh, 10 other schools that we're, <coughs> that we're doing these charts. So. It's, it's been uh, quite a run, and we're about halfway there. Wow. Well, thanks. Okay. Anybody have questions or comments? I just want to say that I'm concerned because we have really strong enrollments in our courses this year. Uh, when I first came to Leland and Gray, I was asked by another administrator and some teachers, what about kids with early release, and late arrival? And I would say, what's that? Well, kids who are here for half a day. And I said, that's wrong. <laughs> we shouldn't have any students like that, and we don't. And while there are a number of students who have a free block, uh, you know, for a semester or a period for the year or something, uh, in, who are juniors and seniors. Uh, the course enrollment is really strong, and I mean, Tom Chen has 71 students, and our, I, mm. this is double from a couple of years ago, it's, and the same thing is going to happen as those kids move up into French 3 and 4, and they, I mean, they've never had so many students before. And so when I hear about the shortfall in the budget, and I know what the implications are, maybe I shouldn't be saying this so publicly, but I'm like, well, what happens when all the students are in Algebra 2, which is two years from now? Right now, we have 25%, 30% of our students getting to Algebra 2. So we just yeah, want I mean, to throw that out there. Is, that's well, we have, to, we have to reallocate our resources or increase the resources. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the challenge the board faces in collaboration with administrative team to figure out what the possible solutions or choices are. Everybody wants their cake and eat it too, but... There's just know. so much cake to go around. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, there Thanks. could be worse dilemmas. I mean, that's it is right. the good news, bad news, you know. I mean, yeah. after all, that's what our goal is, to better educate our children. Right. But, uh, I'm very excited there are, to hear those numbers. There are, there are costs, and it's a certain okay. part of the issue regarding what's happening with enrollment in, in art or in music and so forth, I mean, in other, other disciplines. I mean, if 71 kids are taking Chinese and, you know, five years ago it was 20, this is a significant Well, I also difference. don't want to belabor this too long, but I want to just say that last year um, there were some people who, I know Doreen was not one of them, but there were some people who were quite upset with a governor making a statement that, he, like he did, with the Commissioner of Education about um, the, the Algebra 1 and Geometry in the 9th and 10th grades. And um, however you feel about that, and, and certainly Duren supported it and was pleased to hear because you made a public statement about that because we're doing that here already now. And um, that's a, but that is a significant message coming from the state <coughs> level as well, you know, that we need to be strengthening our math and science. And we've been hearing that right up from the top level in the state of Vermont, so. And as Stephen knows, in the Common Core State Standards, which take effect in two years, right. it's algebra in eighth grade and geometry in ninth grade. So right. it'll be accelerating all students. Yeah, that's really the, 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 the challenge of how, is that all students will be receiving and be, have, have, have uh, achieved uh, the standards in numeracy and uh, fractions and algebra and decimals. So uh, that's why, and I'm very pleased to say that the teachers are very enthusiastic about this course and these courses, and we, we have good enrollment. And uh, uh, when we get uh, the new contract ratified, we'll be able to ensure that uh, we'll be able to provide the 
professional development to get the job done. Okay. Any other comments or questions for Frank? Yeah, just add my commendation to Frank, but also all the people in my office. This summer was a tremendous collaboration of, you, know, you can imagine the stresses on the system of a very small work group. And uh, there was a lot of coverage for each other. There was a lot of uh, uh, cooperative uh, support. And uh, I just commend all of them uh, uh, individually and collectively for uh, pulling this off, because it always turns out to be a much more difficult task than you, you imagine when you uh, signed the contract. Well, you took the words out of my mouth in much more <laughs> detail, but I just was going to extend our thanks to Frank and his staff, Thank and you. including Carolyn as well. I know it's been huge. Okay, if there's nothing else, we can whip right through the rest of this agenda, I think, pretty quickly. The Regional Education District is the only thing we haven't done under old business. Um, I don't even, have we had a meeting since we met last time? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. I've been I've been been Actually, I think we have since the since well, the that was the WCC. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't remember whether we held the regional education district. So when we're off for a month, it gets me all mixed up. But um, I guess everyone's aware that Wyndham has made the decision to not um, continue. Is that correct? Well, we're all aware of that, the, uh, the drop in the study. study. And, and um, Dion and I and yeah, Stephen were that attended a meeting up there last night, and it sounds pretty, you know, strong in Wyndham that they're staying with that. And um, so I, the, the, um, there's a date at the end of your agenda, which is incorrect. The Regional Education and District Study Committee is meeting again, and I, you know, encourage anyone who wants to to come. It's actually not on the 10th, it's on October 3rd. That's okay. a, the first Wednesday I think I already of had October. A Make sure you note it. If you had a previous print, it said the 10th. It is going to be on the 3rd and the meeting is here. And so the discussion will be around what our next steps will be. Um, there's there's so, several different options that we can discuss. And um, I don't really want to beleaguer them unless you guys are interested in hearing about it here. Anyway, the four remaining towns appear to be committed to trying to pursue a K through 12 uh, district. So we'll see how they can do it. And honestly, I, I know there's three of us who are sitting on that. Is it three or four of us who are sitting on the regional education study committee from um, who are also representing Leland and Gray, not on the committee, but who are on the board. And our perspective is huge because we already operate under a similar type system. But I would encourage the rest of you to come too. And even though Wyndham has chosen to not continue their participation, I've encouraged them to come. And I'm hoping that they will continue to participate so that they are aware of what's happening. Because it really has an impact on Wyndham as well, because Wyndham's part of Lillian and Gray. And Lillian and Gray may or may not continue in its existence if something moves forward. So. Um, Please come to the meeting if you can. You know, I hope you will. Does anybody have any questions about that? Go ahead, Bruce. I know that Jamaica has not met huh. since any of this happened. So um, there's, there will be a meeting on the 21st, 18th? Uh, I'll look it up again. I thought I just read uh, email. It's a Tuesday. And I, I think that's an important meeting, at least for the Jamaica folks, <laughs> because I'm not sure where that's going. Yes, it's the 18th for Jamaica. And then so you're planning on being at that meeting then? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Uh, feel free to go, Patty. <laughs> that's the 18th of September? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that really took me back when the Wyndham decided not to participate in everything was the knowledge that um, even if they're not participating, they could have participation on the board and have a vote. So I think it's important everybody understand that that was one of the things at that time, that even though they aren't participating in the red, they could they have. They still have a vote on the red board um, under the current modified red or mud. Um, modified unified but, union. 
<laughs> modified yeah. Unified Union, Union School District. District yeah. So it's short mud for short. Um, but, but honestly, <laughs> so it's pretty mud. It is a little muddy. It is fairly appropriate. But um, it, it, and there's been a lot of questions about it, and there's been a lot of suggestion that there will need to be some uh, technical modifications to that law after 156. So we'll see. Yeah, 156. 156 did. Uh, 153. So that provision provided. Uh, I'm sorry. At yeah, the state ahead. level, that particular, how these things like that. That, that when when um, 153 came out, that was the reds, yeah. and it didn't uh, address many issues that people wanted, and it wasn't um, flexible enough for many school districts. So they they um, added or they added some more flexibility to it through a new law this year, Act 156. And um, what that allowed was modified unified school districts. So it's a modified red. Which, um, which meant but, that. But, which meant right, that. Right, but you didn't have to, well, there's many things that it meant. Yeah. And you've got to look at the law, and it's very confusing. But um, what it did mean was you didn't have to, all, all members of a union school district didn't necessarily have to participate. Um, to continue forward, such as wind and pulling out, we could still continue forward, um, as long as it met other criteria as well. But unfortunately, it, it appears that some of the language is just, just, just not going to hold up, and so it may need some technical amendments to 156 to actually make us able to um, uh, move forward under a, a modified red. So, We'll find out a lot more about that, and if you want to come to that meeting, please do, because John Everett's going to be bringing us some more information mm -hmm. about that at the meeting. There's also other options that, that are on the table for us, and one would be um, in foregoing something that we have not wanted to do all along, and I know we at Leland Gray don't want to do it, but that's foregoing the K-12 and doing the K-6 red. So that would include the four elementary schools, not including um, Wyndham, and they would form a, a modified Union would be K-6. That's allowed now as well. That's another piece of flexibility in there. And then Leland and Gray would still stay in place as it is today, and Wyndham would just continue with their school, and they would still have a vote on the board of Leland and Gray, but they wouldn't be on that K-6 board. If it's a K-12, then they would be on. That's what oh, you're talking okay. about, Patty. If, okay. the, if, okay. if it's K-12, they've got to, we've got to figure out how that works. Okay. Now, does one vote from Wyndham make much difference on the K-12? 12 board, I, I don't know, but if it was new fame with four votes and they weren't in, that would probably make a difference. So, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It can be, you know, it's got to be worked out. So, please come to the October 3rd meeting if you want to have these questions answered. Honestly, it has a big impact on us at Leland and Gray, so I would really encourage all of you to come. And we will be probably making a decision at that meeting whether we're going to just halt, um, move forward. I think it's been talked about at all levels, um, at the, each elementary, except Jamaica. Well, yeah. Jamaica has not had a quorum. Uh, and, uh, but I know Newbrook did, and I know Newbrook they want to continue on the with the like They want to continue on, and I, I think that's uh, Townsend's position, although I wasn't at the board meeting last night. Frank was Frank attending for me. But uh, I know that was their position earlier. So I think it really will be interesting and based on the advice we get as to what the best path is at least available or how patient we want to be. I mean, some people are pretty cynical about waiting for the legislature to change the rules so we can make something work. But, you know, that, that may be uh, the tough choice that uh, the members of the committee face. Uh, the next step is for the committee to move forward with the articles to, uh, to the state board. And uh, I think that that would probably, uh, I would advocate that we take some initiative that way uh, and and there, therefore precipitate or cause the legislature or the state board to make a decision <laughs> that would clarify the issue because the, the you know the challenge is why does a member from Wyndham on this new red board K-12 board uh, have a vote regarding the elementary school kids that they've already pulled their, their school out of that's the conflict that people see that is kind of hard to that's swallow and you know that that I think that can be arranged through bylaws and you know voting on certain measures. But 
it's, uh, it's still not as clear as people like. And when you go to the public to have the public approve these articles, you have to be clear about these mm -hmm. things. I know what you're talking about. We, I, 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 I think, think that was evident at the We had a big you, list. We had a big list in that meeting last night of all the people uh, that had questions or wanted more clarification yeah. or Well, some of the questions, to be fair, were really not weren't. even on the table at this point That's in right, time. I mean, that, that was... A, that, that made it a little more confusing because yeah. there were a lot of questions that people wanted to have answered about building where, a new elementary school when the red really hadn't even had that. <laughs> where is the building going to be on a floodplain or not? Yeah. Yeah. Was, it, it, but that is something I know you guys have mentioned to us about, about yeah. the red. Well, right, but, but we, we didn't go any farther than what Ancha had presented at the meeting last mm -hmm. night, which was just hypothetical if mm -hmm. the red yeah. decided they wanted to move forward with that then all those questions would have to be looked at Flushed and answered out. then. Right. We were not, uh, we hadn't even looked at it to that level at all on the Red Committee. We were just looking at, do we want to form a Red? Okay. And this, this building the school was secondary to that, although it was critical to it. That's but right. it was that was my understanding. It was critical yeah. for some of the towns. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, and also appreciate that there are very limited resources in my office. <laughs> we can't be chasing a lot of hypotheticals, figuring out all the money and so forth, when we're changing our accounting system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, there's just only so much you can you can claim to do. And the public may be crying for all these details that, in fact, you know, our, our, we don't have the resources to provide. I, I mean, it was, a, I felt, you know, somewhat sorry for what Wyndham had to go through last night because they were taken to task for something that I don't think was really quite fair by the community members. And, and uh, honestly, the... Um, the, the red, we, we at the red committee, and maybe this wasn't expressed well enough at the meeting last night, but we on the, on the red committee had never had, the, had we, we weren't at the stage to take it to a public engagement process. And what the board up there was sort of taken task for was that why weren't we told the details? Well, the details weren't there yet because we hadn't even made a decision on the red committee to actually move forward. We had the draft articles because we needed to look at something, you know, but we hadn't even decided whether we were going to present those. And the meeting where Wyndham came to the Red Committee and said we're going to pull out was the meeting where we were getting feedback from the five, the, uh, five Four, towns. Five towns yeah. um, and then Leon Gray, if they wanted to have input, but the five towns on, yes, here's what, we, we like this and we want to move forward. And that was the meeting where it when pulled out. So we've never reached the process of public engagement. And I know that the timeline was tough. And we were questioning on the Red Committee whether we were going to be able to meet that timeline anyway. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we realized it was potentially possible and there, were, there was a lot of uh, pressure on, uh, from, from some people who wanted to do it early enough. You know, there were a lot of reasons for it. So we could have, we had already discussed if we needed to move it back, we could do town meeting. We had discussed maybe May, so we had had <laughs> other alternatives. But again, we weren't at that stage where we were ready to go. So all the tedious work has been done, and actually, that was a very interesting meeting to right. get a roundup of everything that the committee had done, which was a ton. Yeah. Yeah, Anja had a ten-page document. She did a great job. So uh, 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 by month by month, what the committee yeah. had accomplished. Yeah. Which and was really some, quite impressive. Yeah, there were some great questions asked. Yeah, at the meeting we're all boards were. Right, yeah. right. But now it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> Join the fun. Well, we'll, well, we'll this, this again, next meeting uh, will October be critical 30th. about what to yeah. come and yeah. yeah. come mm -hmm. and share your feedback. Yeah. I hope you will do that. So, Okay. October 3rd. Okay, because it says 10th. I know. Attending. I know. I tried we were busy to doing change. something else when I was you, correcting you, it. But, uh, um, the, the copies I passed out tonight, I, I hand wrote the correction button. It's October 3rd, 7 o'clock, right so here. Okay. You printed at home, you had the wrong. Date. So, if, there, if there's nothing else um, of course I printed on the red, you're prepared. We, we have a brief discussion. I, you all, honestly, Lily and Gray has been wonderful, even though I've only gotten responses from Lillian and Gray board members. That's much more than I've had for responses from any other Wyndham Central board members. Um, on my email about the joint, a possible proposed joint study between Wyndham Central and Wyndham Southwest Supervisory Union. 
Um, I hope you all saw that email that went to all of you, and I know some of you did because I got responses back. It went to your Wind Central email address. Well, yeah, you actually do have that. <laughs> it hasn't gone so away. Like, I, my, I got a new like phone. Like it's there. Like so if you if you are your, if you're not using your, you e your Wyndham Central email, you're going to miss everything. I don't remember my username. If, if, your username if you're not is using it, Mike. WyndhamCentralBoard.org. If you're not using it, you need to get that straightened out because everything's <laughs> going to that only for for Wyndham Central email. Exactly. So it, it, and and there's ways around dealing with it. If you call central office, if you yeah. lost, call us, call you us call them and get, get it straightened out. Because you need that okay. stuff. Um, and, and so for those of you who responded, thank you. And if you haven't, do because you know who's coming. We need a quorum yeah. um, for that meeting. And I, I don't know what do we want. It is the 26th, and it's at Dover on 7 p.m. And it's a letter that if anybody was at the retreat, you'll know, Patty, I know you were there and a few mm -hmm. others were there, um, a, a letter that came to us from the Wyndham Southwest Supervisor Union's board chair on behalf of their board asking to, for us to look at um, exploring some shared services or whatever. Um, we'll find out on the 26th what, they're, what they have in mind. And there, in there. that email attached to it is that letter. So if you're interested, read it, um, the letter that came from the chair of their board. Agenda will come out shortly. Uh, oh, and there's and, a facilitator. Uh, and a facilitator will be Stephen Dale. Stephen Dale. Steve and, Dale's uh, and, and then uh, I know that uh, he's collaborating and consulting with Seth Boyd, who's the chair of that union board, the supervisor union board, and, and Emily. And uh, yeah, the uh, superintendent there and myself. So. Yeah, so. We want to make sure that that is a. Uh, these are ongoing significant consideration and then you have an idea about what will be involved before you attend the meeting uh, this it, it, uh, I tried to, what I said in the email and I meant it there may be some decisions that are made at this meeting to enter a study and it's really important to get feedback from everybody so Leland Gray is big in this um, so we should because because honestly this we're talk, they have a high school over there too so if we're doing joint you know we want to know What's up? So please come to this meeting if you can. It's it's in Dover, and the reason it's in Dover is to accommodate the two supervisor unions. So it's a result of them being at a place right now where they don't have a superintendent. That's right. right. So they're looking at okay. Before we stick with one format, let's look what's out there. Right. They they have asked Nancy Talbert, who was the uh, been assistant, been to be interim. Yeah. But but yeah, their superintendent left, and so. This is an opportunity, I think, for them. And that, and that and honestly, the conversations I've had with Seth are very positive. They're looking at this as an opportunity, and why not look? So that's what this is about. So please come. Okay. Is there anything else about that? If not, we can move on to the con oh, approve bills and payers. Wow. Okay. So now we have two different numbers. We've got warrants because I guess this is where it switched over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have warrants, and it was much easier before when it was 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. I read up through to 96, and then um, of the general fund, and then warrants. Um, I'm just going to read them from the. Uh, Let me read them the all. Total. The total, really. I'm gonna, uh, if anybody wants to see the numbers of the warrants, it's just going to take me way too long to read them because they've got eight digits each. So. Um, I'm just going to, does anybody want me to read the eight digits and they will mean nothing to you? Okay. So if you want to read that, there are three people who have reviewed, or two people who have reviewed this, and um, so I'm just going to count. Um, there's a number of general fund warrants. Uh, totaling $619,658.36, and then we have payrolls, and I'm, not, I'm also not going to read all of those, but there are uh, eight of them, totaling $324,000. $922.30, total warrants and payroll of $944,580.66. And the payroll's dates are from uh, 7-13-2012 to 8-31-2012. And I need a motion. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Comments, questions? I know there were some back and forth with Frank. Everybody? All set. All set? Okay. All those in... In uh, favor of removing the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> okay, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda. Um, 
we can just do that. Did we? Oh the yeah. They, you all got them. Everybody Sunday, got the minutes. Late, mm -hmm. but, uh, okay. So by consensus, we'll approve the consent agenda. Okay. No objections. Um, executive session. Uh, I don't think it's going to be needed. Uh, I will say publicly that we believe we're very close to having a final document for a ratification vote on the CBA, but uh, we don't quite have it yet. So, uh, which means another month. Well, that's uh, true. Yes, and uh, of course it does delay our adjustment of the of the payroll and so forth. Which you know will give Frank's uh, department and division another opportunity to learn the whole process again. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we may make we a tried to get this we done We may make August. a positive really out of that, did. too. I don't know. But uh, at least it's people not get a chance to repeat their skills. It's, it's not nothing to do with the... the no, it's no, there's no, uh, illness no indication of uh, difficulty except yeah. for uh, uh, illness and uh, making sure that we're very careful about having everything correct. Okay. So no executive session. Oh, also there, there is a... We have two agreements. One is with the pair, the support staff, oh, the pair yeah. professionals, yeah, and that one uh, also is uh, tentatively agreed to, but it won't be ratified until the teacher. It's it's contingent upon the teacher uh, collective bargaining agreement being being ratified. The two-step okay. process. Okay, so we'll be doing them both at the same time, probably. That's the good news. Okay, so you read on your agenda the next meetings. Um, please come to them all if you can. The VSBA Wyndham Regional Meeting, I hope you guys will sign up for that. You have to go to the VSBA website to sign up for that, but that is here. And it's a pretty important thing if you can make it. Um, it is a dinner provided. That's the third item on there, VSBA Wyndham Regional Meeting. It's where you elect your Wyndham Regional Officers and... Um, it's a there's a good presentation that night. Tell you the truth, I can't remember what it is, but go on go online. It's been it's been developing, but you'll see it online when you go online to sign up for it. And um, you just need to fill out the form at the BSBA website. And the election of Please your Please come. The election of your officers for representation. At right, the and one of them is a Wyndham one of them's a Wyndham Central board member, so Rich Werner, he's he's this is he's running for his second year on the BSBA board. And then there's a gentleman from Brattleboro who's interested in running. So, because we have two, two, uh, a president and a vice president. So, please come to that meeting if you can. Like I said, there's a little meal. And what time does it start? It starts at five o'clock with the meal, and then um, five thirty or so. With, I think with the business part of the meeting, and then there's a presentation. Okay. Anything else? If not, we just need a motion. Okay. Don't Way to wake up there. Is there a second? Second. All right, Jay, second. Someone want to go? Opposed? We're out. It always takes so long to get that motion. I think I'll catch him off guard or something.